Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to the Archcast once again, where we can open today's proceedings with a, a happy news. It's a rarity, isn't it, V, in this day and age? Good news. I don't remember the last time we had happy news. No, it has unironically been a while, hasn't it? Like, the best we can we can muster is, like, things that there are indications that things are getting better and we can be like, this seems to be a suggestion that things will be less shit in a while. I'm still trying to think of the last time I heard good news. You may hear random I'm slapping. Sure, like it's going to come to me. Yeah. Throughout it's, it's this going uh, to come to me. live stream. As I'm mm. trying to kill the gnat in my room yet again. <sighs> This winter has been the worst because we've had this drawn out winter thing and now everything is wet and so the forest above my house is just one large swamp. And it's been producing Well, at least you're not getting species. mice. Oh, the mice get eaten by the local wildlife, so that's not too bad. Mm. Oh, I remember the last good news, but like all the good news are bad people suffering. You know, it's like, oh, Disney lost uh, another hundred billion. Oh, Budweiser stock went down. But, like, there's no good news when I'm, like, actually happy and excited that something is happening. Well, this is a little bit of a mix of both, frankly. Because, on the one hand, it is bad news happening to somebody else. But, on the other hand, I am also quite happy for this bad news happening to somebody else. As uh, Elon Musk has elected to remove a account, straight up banning it, who was posting uh, pro-pedophilia flags on the platform. Oh yeah, I saw that. Did you know that there is an official uh, Happy Pedophile Day? Happy Pedophile Day. Yes, which is what that account was celebrating. Like, they were creating a flag for that day. If I'm not mistaken, it's called, like, Alice Day or something? Alice Day. See, now that would make a certain amount of sense, considering the, uh, you know, originator of the whole thing. Happy So, I, I don't know Day. the name of the guy, but I have seen it. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, the colors of the transgender flag, but they, they weren't, like, horizontal. They were diagonal. Well, it was one of their little, um, it was lots of, like, derpy little vague pastel colors, which for some reason is... I don't know, popular See, amongst this particular make... grouping. I don't even understand. But it was all, like, skewed and shit, because he didn't want to go for the colonial stereotype of straight lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's basically the way they do originality. Like, they take something that it already exists, and they just modify it a little bit, and it's like, well, I made this now. And it's, it's not even that, but it's like, okay, so everyone has been making their flags this way forever, because it's the only way flags look good, frankly. And I've elected to not do that, and unsurprisingly, they came up with a flag that looked like ass. Like, weird. Isn't it weird that we're the only ones whose sexuality doesn't have a flag? Like, this is actually how I recommend myself. Like, what sexuality are you? Uh, the one that doesn't require a flag. Well, we had one for a short uh, period of time there, the uh, the straight pride flag, but it was since banned super and straight, uh, deemed a hate symbol. It looked actually really good. I mean, I, I liked it. It um, had, like, orange and black on it, if I remember correct. Uh, let's see. Here we go. The straight pride flag is a hate symbol, <laughs> indeed. Is it a hate symbol? Like, did it actually get classified as such? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It is, ironically. Oh. Well, of course. Like, like whenever I'm fucking, I, I'm spreading the hate. Uh, like, the straight pride flag... It, just black and orange is the one I found, which was uh, rather boring. Yeah, but it's not straight. It's super straight. It's super straight. Oh, that's another one, maybe. Yes. Because, no, no, no. Like, look, look, look. Straight people would still have sex with a transgender woman, but a super straight person would not. Like, that's how actually it came to be. A super straight flag. Hmm. Yes. Because, because like they, they said that uh, straight people still have sex with trans women, right? Because trans women are women. So someone went. It's like, well, okay, if that's the case, then I am super straight. It's like a new sexuality. And that's the why it's a social media hate trend because... has people identifying as super straight. The transphobic campaign was meant yes. to divide LGBTQ people. See, I know the lore. See, I don't. I okay. don't. So okay, so. It, 
if if being super straight is meant to mm-hmm. divide LGBTQ people, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Doesn't that mean that LGBTQ was meant to divide straight people? Look, Arch, if, if it's about the sexual degeneracy or some obscure flag, I can give you the lore, but like you're asking philosophical questions now, you need the saga. No, I, I kind of, I like the self-report there. It's like, oh, hold on, we recognize this tactic, we're using it on you. Yes. <laughs> there was another news that came out, which was very funny and interesting. Uh, Florida decided to... Uh, not allow children at pride marches and the pride march organizers went well, well fuck that shit and, and they canceled the event um it, it was it was worse than that too wasn't it uh it, it? no it was it was way worse than that let me see if i can find it, it? Uh, oh yes it was it was way worse than that let's see what was it uh uh, 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 ah, yes. So, it's mentioned here, actually we'll return to the whole Elon Musk thing in a second, but this is an interesting little tangent we waffled on to. Uh, John McCallow says, can't think of anything witty to say, so I'll just say this, Arch can have monies. Thank you very much. That is a witty thing in and of itself. And Mark James says, bad news for bad people equal good news. Yes. Yeah, but like, I would want some good news for good people for a change. It's like, it, it's nice when it's bad news for bad people, but like, some good news for me, it's like, hey, you know, Diablo 4, actually a good game, you should play, something like, oh, Jedi, Jedi, great game, works perfectly fine. I would like some news like that, but no. So, the bill prohibits exposing children to adult live performances. And now that it is no longer legal to expose children to adult live performances, the LGBT community is very worried. They are they are very concerned for their community. So, if my succubus goes to a strip club, you're saying that you can't have children there? Yes. In fact, oh. you're not allowed to strip for children in general, actually. See, I was bringing up this point. Um... Like, for example, public indecency, right? Uh, strong laws against it, but if you're in an LGBT march, then it's fine. Because we have seen pictures of that. Like, we, we have seen people walking in fetish gear. We have seen people dressed up like dogs and walking on the street. Like, normally, if you do that outside of the march, then you probably would get arrested. So Florida is the only part that's like, no, 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 no. Look, we have laws. Like, you, you're fine to do your march. Just make sure that you're following the the laws that are already in place. It uh, defines adult live performance as any show, exhibition, or other presentation in front of a live audience which, in whole or in part, depicts or simulates nudity, sexual conduct, sexual excitement, or specific sexual activities, lewd conduct, or the lewd exposure of prosthetic or imitation of genitalia or breasts. So no dildos, no... uh... No dildos, no no fetish costumes, no bondage suits... Mm. I think like the transgender women that use prosthetic breasts may have been excluded. Theoretically, I guess. Yes. Uh, but uh, that was uh, the, that, that sounds like a reasonable definition to me, honestly, as reasonable as a legalistic definition gets. Yeah, if you look at the LGBT marches from the 90s, like they would have been in complete compliance with this law. Yes, that would be that would be fine. Unironically fine. But that wasn't yes. even the, the worst thing that happened, of course. The, it, this was not even the largest self-own that the LGBTQ community has committed itself to in the last few days. Um, death penalty for child rapists approved, dissent is expected to sign into law. Shortly thereafter, a new Florida bill could spell literal death for queers and trans citizens. That is problematic. Hold on. Uh, hold, 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 hold on a second there. <laughs> Is there something you wish to tell the audience? Nani, nani. 
It's like, wait, so we make molesting children illegal and punishable by death penalty, LGBTQ people most affected. Hmm. 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 And I think it, uh, it wasn't like any type of molestation. Like, like, in order to get the death penalty, you had to do some serious shit. Well, yeah, normally the death penalty is reserved for uh, a bit above average shit, shall we say. Yes, yes, it's like, you know, they, they would separate the, the pedophile community into various groups, and it would be like below average, average, and above average. And like, it's, like, there, there's death penalties for all kinds of shit. Like, if, if you murder somebody, you might get the death penalty. But generally speaking, if you back over somebody with your car, they're not going to fry your ass. But if you kill them with a waffle iron after six hours of torture, you might get zapped. Yes. Do they zap people? No, I don't think they do anymore. I think they do, don't they? No, I think it's lethal injection all over. Well, I, I know they do use that. Mm. People in the chat, Americanskis, like, tell Europeans, do you still zap people or not? Since 2018, four inmates have been put to death by electric chair. I think they still do use it, but it seems to be pretty rare. Well, they, they might use the environmentalist argument. Maybe. Like, it uses too much electricity? What? Do we? Yes. Okay. Do we need to, like, link it up to a nuclear power plant, I guess, to do this properly? I think that there were a couple of um, mismanagement events which uh, got people upset. Uh, like, for example, they fried someone for over an hour and he still didn't die. So, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, there should be rules. Like, you get, like, two or three zaps. If you fail, clearly God wants the bastard alive. Honestly, I would agree with that. Like, if you take someone and you put them through death row and then you electrocute them and they still live, I have a feeling that they will never commit another crime again. It's like, it was like that in the, the good old days of the mid medieval ages, you know? If you fail to chop their head off on, like, two tries, the, the bastard walked, because, again, clearly, the god almighty has plans. Can he actually walk if, if he, like, has, like, half of the head hanging out, you know? like It's possible. It, uh, it did happen on a couple occasions, but it was fairly rare. But would you want to... I mean, at that point, I would just want it to be over, you know? Like, so, let's be honest. It's... <laughs> Florida has somehow become an even more lethal place to live for queer and trans Americans. Oh, we're, we're bringing the trans people into this, too. All right. Well, the, the LGBTQ community, you can't separate them. The bill, SB 1342, stipulates that sexual child abuse and acts of pedophilia may be punishable by the death sentence. Mm. Which uh, endangers... The, uh, the LGBT community. Hmm. Aha, I see. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I do, uh, who, I do who, who love this Who made the claim, thing. by the way? Like, like, who made the claim? Oh, I think this became a, a widespread thing. Like, I don't oh. know where it started from, but the, the bill was passed, and then people on social media started freaking out about how this was going to affect LGBTQ people. And everything just exploded from there. Because somehow, the people talking about this couldn't figure out why this was making them look so incredibly bad. It's kind of like saying, okay, we're going to pass a law against looting, and someone would say, well, this affects minorities. And you're like, what the fuck? Now, okay, so let's let's... Take the most charitable view imaginable, okay? So, we mm -hmm. have Julio974 here, who has a uh, picture of a, a dragon looking erotic. Step one, define being trans in public as sexual crimes against children, which I don't think that's actually what the law says. I, I do not believe they have legalized being no. trans in public. Oh, I, I, I think I know what they're getting to. Okay, finally. L like, Arch, <clears throat> I will give you wisdom. They think that Drag shows, right? Like drag queen shows done in front of children is going to give them the death penalty. Uh huh. Well, mm -hmm. that's not quite what the law says, but. No, details. but that's what they think. <laughs> Step two make sexual crimes against children punishable by death and lose them's way to the death sentence. There you go. It's a genocide about to take place. All right, okay. Let me just you know, point this out here. If it becomes so popular to just 
straight up kill gays. That you can like, get away with Arabia. executing hundreds, if not thousands of them constantly for walking down the street. The government is not going to need an excuse at that point. They are not going to need the legalistic rationale for doing this. I mean, they believe something different in the word genocide. And, and I find this very interesting, right? Like when the far right used the word white genocide, they, they accurately pointed out, well, this is going to cause extremism, right? Because it's going to cause hysteria and blah, blah, blah. So we need to shut this down as hate speech. But when they're using trans genocide, what they mean is like, if you convince a trans kid to stop being trans, they view that as part of the trans genocide. Yes, right? of course. Uh, or, or if you, for example, if you had a cure for autism, they would view that as autism genocide. Yes, that is their right. definition. But yes. in this case, they're trying to make it into an actual genocide. Which, which if, is if you want to piss them off, you, you say, is trans genocide a subsection of the white genocide? I'm betting they'll because say if no. It's a white, but no, but like, listen, if it's a white transsexual, right, and, and he's being genocide, then that would be a subsection of a greater genocide. Mm, a subsection. Mm. Uh, somehow yes. I don't think they're going to view it that quite that way. No, but they get upset and they can't articulate why. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so it's really funny when you bring it up. But yes, that is the, the most charitable way to interpret this, and the charitable way is not a very good way at all. Uh, I am warning all LGBTQ plus Floridians, members of the media, lawyers, attorneys, allies, and essentially anyone who will listen, I understand the seriousness of what I have to say. This is a law will be used to murder LGBTQ people or anyone who affirms LGBTQ plus youth. So this is a key term here, who affirms LGBTQ plus youth. Because what does that mean? What does, it, what does it mean to affirm LGBTQ youth, I wonder? Well, it, it means that they get to talk about these issues before the parents even got to talk about the birds and the bees with the kids. Yeah, it, it means that they get to normalize it before anything even begins. Like, it... it, it, it how to put it? So, it means they take them to events where they indoctrinate them, which is what the Pride Parades is when they bring children there. Children have no understanding of what a Pride Parade is. A child does not get why a bunch of people are walking around in fetish gear. The child does not even know what fetish gear is. The child doesn't know about the oppression of gays like 50 years ago, etc. None of this has any... has any frame of reference for a kid. You know, it would be like taking them to NASA right and be like okay so this is how rockets work like all they can do is look at it and go like wow rockets are pretty cool that is the extent of it a pride parade is just that it is an indoctrination process for kids where you have lots of pretty colors you've got lots of sparkly lights you bring candies and drinks etc and you throw a party whilst telling the children oh look isn't this great look you get to have fun with all of the weird people it's also interesting, uh, like, they, they did this research and they found out that at a classroom when one person comes out as trans, then many other follow. Because it's a, it, it makes sense, right? Like, one comes out and everyone is like, oh my god, oh, I'm stunning a brave, stunning a brave, right? And uh, all the spotlight is on them. So other kids go like, hmm, I want the spotlight. I'm yes. not trans, but if I say I am, but if I say I am, I'll get the spotlight. Absolutely. It, it, it Because it has become cool. Like, this is a form of social contagion. Because once they see one person get all of the attention for doing this, well, the other kids also wanting to, uh, to get attention, they're going to do it as well. But this is literally how you stimulate good behavior in kids, right? Like, like it used to be, oh, Johnny got a perfect A. You know, come in front of the class. Everyone clap for Johnny. He got a perfect A. So, like, other kids wanted to get perfect A so that they get to have the clap. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's literally why we give prizes. You know, it's like the, the number one prize, the number one cup, the silver, the bronze. It's, it's literally to incentivize other people to be like that. Yes, of course. And this has been well documented now as well, of course. Uh, like, for example, an explosion. What is behind the rise in girls questioning their gender? 
I, I wonder, what could it possibly be? Could it be that this is all we talk about now? Could it be that this is being not only normalized, but made trendy, perhaps? Promoted, as they say. And another one from the, the Pew Research Center. Oh, Jesus. About 5% of young adults in, uh, in the U.S. say their gender is different from their sex assigned at birth. 5%. Would be interesting to see uh, just how many are genuinely interested in transitioning and how many are like, well, if I say this, I get popularity points. So to point out, the U.S. has a population of like, what, 300 plus million people now? 334 million people is the, is the current yeah. number. Yeah. So that means that there are probably more transgender people in the US than the entire world, if this 5% statistic is correct. Did someone do the math? Wait, hold on, let me bring up ChatGPT. I'll ask it, how much is 5% of 350 million? I think it's like uh, 1.5 million? Uh, let's see here, it's 1,700,000, no, it's it's more, 117? It's 17 million, I think, people. Shut the fuck up! That's the population of Romania, dude. Yeah, 17 million, 500,000 is 5% 5 of 350 million. I do not think there are that many. I, I press X to doubt. Uh, very much so X to doubt. So there, there's 17 and a half million transgender people in America. Yeah, that's the population of Romania right there. Yes. I was like, I don't Romania know if that's true. It's it's a decent sized country. Like like you have an army of trans people that can take over Hungary at this point. Yes. Does Hungary have a military? I mean, no. Yeah, you can. You can. You can. You literally can. You can just go in there, and uh, if they have Transylvania, you can take it back. There you go. <clears throat> To also swing this back to uh, to Elon, then yet again, because we were gonna move it back there. Mm -hmm. This, the whole Florida thing, is a response to what people view as deeply unpopular shit, obviously. <laughs> like the whole... I, lo I love the way you framed it. Hold on, hold on. Can you say it again? Because I loved it. Deeply unpopular shit. It is, it is like, oh my god. It's so concisive. Like, you, you literally just described everything that's happening in the US right now. Because it is literally what it is. Yeah, They've it is. seen no, no, this get just... out of hand, it's getting ridiculous, and so they're starting to pass more and more stringent laws to deal with it. It is the, the recoil effect. It's gotten so far that the lawmakers are looking at this and going, well, shit. <laughs> what do we no, do to stop this? Deeply unpopular shit. Yeah, deeply unpopular shit. <laughs> and so you can justify almost anything in order to get rid of it. Again... Why do you think people are fine with the death penalty for a crime? It's only fine if people really fucking hate that crime. And as it turns out, yes. molesting children is relatively unpopular. It is. Like, even in prison, you, you know, like, the women are like, oh my god, we live in a rape culture. Okay, but like, when you're in prison, other prisoners do not treat rapists very well, and people turn a blind eye to it. A, a subsection of that, like, you, you can be even worse than a rapist. And that's a pedophile. Yes. That, that is the, the bottom rung right there. Like, unironically, <laughs> the bottom, yeah. unironically let, me, let, me let me take the map movement in defense here for a moment. The only group of people that could possibly be oppressed more <laughs> would be the Nazis. Because people don't like pedophiles. Weirdly enough. I know. It shocker. I don't know. Like, I, I genuinely... See, this would be an interesting question. Like, you, you, which is more unpopular, a Nazi or a pedophile? I think, like, the pedophiles would be more unpopular. I don't know. Because the Nazis I, would get a vote, too, you know? I think that the pedos would be accepted by a certain subset of uh, the left, shall we say, whereas the Nazis would not. I mean, the Nazis aren't even accepted by the modern-day right anymore. But the thing with the Nazis is, like, if they don't act... <laughs> They don't act on it. They just they, don't they just be a Nazi it. in private. Yeah, like literally, you know, they do like the cosplay, they did the sun, but in private, you know? <laughs> like, okay, if you want to march around your house in your fucking little SS suit, then go ahead. <laughs> 
Maybe, maybe. It'll be an interesting discussion of which one is most and more unpopular. But of course... Well, no, that's the pedophile argument, you know? It's like, oh, as long as we don't act on it. And it's like, okay, well, like, then if the Nazi don't act on it... This is also <laughs> used then in return to push it yet further. Because as we've talked about multiple times on this channel, and you've talked about it, I'm sure, as well, it's never enough because it cannot be enough. Because the moment they admit that they have won, well, they need to go away, don't they? Like, they've gotten everything they're asking for, so now their job is done. Now there's yes. no more power, now there's no more government grants, there's no more income, there's no more fundraisers. Not gonna. That's not. That's not kosher. No. And what's interesting is that it actually happened in Germany. Like a, a lot of the more uh, proclivity of mankind have probably happened in Germany. Uh, the Green Party recently apologized for trying to push for pedophilia, and they had like kindergartens where they would uh, harvest children from there. And like you can Google it. Like it is the. Official stance of the Green Party apologizing, and this happened like a couple of years ago. So, you know, it, it was very close in passing the legislation. Let's see. Uh, there's the first result on Google. The New Republic. This sounds far right, V. I don't know about this. Mm -hmm. A major German political party used to support pedophilia, and it yes. is coming back to haunt them. You don't say. Yes. No, you don't say. I, I'm telling you, like, every single time, like, if you want to see, uh, you know, like, would this degeneracy ever go public? Uh, look if it happened in Germany, and you can use that as a benchmark. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, for the past year and a half, investigators commissioned by the party have been probing its past association with pro-pedophilia groups, and the report has been shocking to many Germans. It found that the German pedosexual movement which advocates mm -hmm. the legalization of consensual sex between adults and children, there is no such thing, incidentally, found a surprisingly warm reception in the party in the 1980s. You know, I find it very quaint that the avatar of myself is a succubus now while we're having this conversation, like people in the chat are pointing it out. Oh, there you go. The, uh... <laughs> Germany. It had to be Germany, of course. Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber, alles. But, you know, fun fact, the communists, they criminalized LGBT throughout the Iron Curtain. Like, like literally, if you were gay, you, you would be in prison, right? The only country, the only country in the entire satellite Soviet states that did not do that was East Germany. Like, because they know what it is. They are, they are entirely aware of this. Like, well, you're being a subversive leftist movement. Yes. Well, we no, wrote no, the no, book that's on not, that. that's not it. No, they, they would probably not be able to enforce it. Like, look, every other country, right, like, that was under the Soviet Union influence, they, they criminalized LGBT. The only one that didn't was East Germany because, like, the, 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 the things were so far over there that they were like, well, we shouldn't even try at this point. You shouldn't even try. Yeah, like Stalin ba banned them, right? Like Stalin like looked at the, the, the situation and he went like, shit. Well, I guess, you know, like I, it, it's acceptable. Like one country can, can still do it. Everyone else, though. But this will, of course, then be used, as always, to push further. Because that is the, the entire point of it. And a lot of this we now have demonstrated... Yet again, okay. So, the the entire thing, right? The the pride is pride, or pride love is love movement, right? Love is love. So all love is the same thing. All right. This is, by the way, why I do not think that the left has any defense against the inevitable moving in of the map movement into their ranks. Like the only reason why it hasn't happened already is because of how thoroughly despised this shit is. But it will eventually happen because there is no intellectual defense against it on the left. Like, your entire creed is all love is the same. Okay, so what is your argument against the maps? It's like, well, I don't like it. Like, okay, welcome to the conservative side, I guess. They, they even call it liberation, right? Like a child that has to follow the parents. That's not good. They, they need to be liberated. And oh, by the right. way, someone in the chat pointed out something. Uh, Sujad for five euros. 
Don't forget that the German gave children to pedophiles as a science experiment. A couple of years ago, it was revealed that the German government did indeed fund a psychologist which believed that children from orphanage would find loving homes among pedophiles because they love children. Yes, I did. I did hear about that. And what's interesting is that the German people read that and they were like, hmm, well, yeah, like, no outrage, no protest. It's like, hmm, sehr schön. Yep. Understandable. Sehr, sehr schön. And that is, of course, also why you have kids at the pint parades. Like, because again, it's propaganda. It is a way to bring children, as they have been doing now for years and years, into what is an overtly sexualized sphere. Is also the reason why every time you see the pictures of the kids at pint parades, they, well, they look like that, that one stripper boy who totally does this out of his own free will, etc. Uh, his name, uh, or, or, uh, yeah, I think his because he's not trans. I need to be careful on your channel, right? Because YouTube TOS, uh, Lactasia. Lactasia. Okay, I didn't want to know that. Lactasia. Uh, Desmond is amazing. Is his actual name, uh, and the stage name is Lactasia. And we can further prove this by the fact that, okay, Florida LGBTQ group cancels Pride Parade thanks to anti-drag bill. So the moment Florida says, no, you can't put on a sexualized strip show for kids, they throw up their hands and go, oh, well, what's the point then? <laughs> what's the point? It's like, oh, well, we can't bring children to the Pride Parade. Well, we might as well not then. Like, excuse me? <laughs> I, keep, I don't know. It literally it is, is one of those straight up mask off moments. Like, okay, so you can't bring children to it. All right, well, if this is about your pride, then surely that's not a problem? Like, if this truly was about your pride, couldn't you just do this by yourself? Do you even need a parade to do it? Couldn't you just, you know, be happy? I want to show you something else uh, regarding this subject. I posted it in the link channel. Mm hmm. Ninety-five percent of trans activism is for anime profile pictures. Anime being demonic. See, they're picking on my culture now. That they, they saw, oh, V is using an anime character. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I don't believe that's true though. Like most of the, from what I could see, are either using cal arts or furry. Cal I don't know when they're coming up with the stats. Yeah, like like the well, the Steven Universe type <laughs> shit, you know. I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of the people saying this wouldn't know the difference between CalArt, furries, and anime. You know what? I think you're right. Like, they see a picture, it's drawn, like, well, that's that anime thing the, the kids anime are Anime thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think if they looked at your avatar, they would be like, anime? Probably, unironically. I have so one of the things that that I did see, right, and this was I think like uh, academic agents take the uh, anime to trans pipeline and being like, oh my god, well, so many people on Twitter are using lolly avatars. <laughs> um, a lot of people with burner accounts do it because it's like hilarious when when like you have the picture of Uzaki chat or some shit, and, and you're attacking a blue check mark and you're mocking and making fun of them, and you know your account is getting banned. But, but, like, you're just doing it to make it look funny. So, like, there, there's a lot of burner accounts that just use, like, anime characters because it's like, oh, look, you're arguing with a little girl. Like, what are you doing with your life? To also wrap up the topic, then, uh, also, the, I think what Elon did here to just remove the map pride flag is a very good thing because it shows mm -hmm. that if the left will not resist this, which they won't, because they have no actual argument against it from their own framework, then this is the only way we can do it. Like, you are... We, we have unironically arrived at the point where we have too much liberty. We, we have let it go too far. And so now we must bring down the hammer to restore normalcy for a, for a bit. 
it's also the fact that uh, Elon Musk has nothing to lose and a lot to gain by doing this, right? Yes. So first of all, like there, there's a lot of fans now. They're like, well, finally, someone is doing something with Twitter. Yep. And secondly, like you could have little leftists that would attack Elon Musk for doing it, in which case it would be hilarious. Uh, but none of them took the bait as far as I know. No, it was a bit too obvious, I guess. And this is why they're, they're a popular target too, because nobody's really going to argue against this now, are they? Which is also why Florida is making it illegal to, you know, strip in front of kids. You would have thought that would have been illegal already, but uh, apparently not. Same, yeah. Like, like uh, th there was a case in my country where, like, like, when I was at law school, I heard about it, which was kind of ridiculous, but, like, the mm -hmm. law is the law. A woman, like, stripped naked in her house, and, like, some kids jumped over her fence, and she got in trouble for indecent exposure. Like, she had no idea the kids were in her yard. So, like, she's addressing, but, like, they could see her through the window. So that that was illegal. And apparently it is, right? Because it's indecent uh, exposure in front of a minor. Which Even is. if they were on her property. Like, yeah, like, the law doesn't mention. So, so, like, the kids were in trouble for violating her property, but she was in trouble for indecent exposure. So... We also have more DeSantis news in a little bit, as, of course, uh, the war in Florida is escalating. But first, a uh, lot of the possum says, hey, Art and V, hope you're having a good day. Well, I am, at least. How about you, DB? Hey. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's good. Mark James says, Fox was always mainstream media, just like CNN. Ah, yes, the, the firing of Tuck Carlson. That was not a very yeah, good move. The they cooked the Tuck. They cooked the Tuck. How much did they lose? I think uh, it, it was like uh, several billion dollars, like two billion for a night. Hmm? It was a lot. Like they have taken a serious a drop to ratings and well, it's, it's like, okay, why? I don't know. Uh, apparently, so there are several rumors. Uh, Tuck uh, had a previous speech where he talked about religion and he said that, you know, like he prays and uh, was, was like very spiritual. Um, he separated good from evil from a non-theological standpoint. He said that good is about cleanliness, order, while evil is about the filth, chaos. Um, so apparently the, the people in charge at Fox didn't appreciate that. Like, that's what the rumor says. Well, there, there are many rumors around this. One of the spicier ones uh, is the one right here, which I put in the link channel. Um, basically, this alleges... And this is, this is one of those, like, or I heard from a friend of a friend kind of shit, almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that apparently a trove of texts and recordings and all kinds of random shit about Tucker Carlson, goddamn this website, was kept secret as some previous employee had recorded and copied all of this and had sent this to the Fox executives, and they were filled with, you know, the usual racism, transphobia, homophobia, etc., etc. And this was what made the uh, the leaders panic, and Yeeters deleters him on the spot, pretty much? I don't believe this, because, um, well, first of all, if it's true, like, we would see the, the recordings now. Um, right, because like he he's still on Twitter, so like they would use that in order to completely destroy his reputation. But secondly, Tucker doesn't seem the type to be racist. Like he seems more like a civic nationalist type of individual. Well, that was the thing. So the the theory is that they are keeping it secret as ammunition if uh, Tucker decides to fight back. So they're they're blackmailing him with all of these secret racist recordings. Um, I don't know. I mean, if they blackmail him, I don't think he would pay because he would be like, okay, but I can pay and they can release it anyway. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I'm particularly, like, see, okay. My theory as to why this happened is the exact same for why uh, Don Lemon got yeeted. The mainstream media is, over the course of the next year or so, going to be slimming its ranks significantly. And not because they need to save money, yet at least. They are going to kick mm -hmm. out anyone who is inflammatory, or anyone who is growing too large of a personal following to be controlled, because America is currently getting ready for war. Straight up. Like, uh, I don't want to be alarmist, but the, the US-China China war is almost certainly 
one to two years away. And here the US is moving to do that. Like suddenly mainstream media news organizations are getting rid of some of their biggest hits because they're, they can't be relied upon to keep their mouths shut when they need to. The, uh, what was the other one? Yes. Um, I mean, I'm going to show you a couple of interesting little things here. It's a bit of a deviation from uh, what we're talking about. Um, the U.S. Army, or no, U.S. Army Air Force. I've been watching too much of World War II documentary shit recently. The U.S. Air Force suddenly cancelled the, or uh, upped the contracts of hundreds of uh, officers, stating that, no, no, we, we read your contract differently. You've got like three years left. Hmm. That's weird. Why, why would they? Why would they suddenly be like, "Oh no, 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 no"? The, the contract's different than the one you thought you'd sign. Hmm. Hmm. It. it I mean, see, just because they're being prepared doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a war, because it's still in China's hands, and China's economy isn't doing that well. So what? at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, the, the, like they are preparing because, uh, and China gives them reason to by surrounding Taiwan. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to happen. It's just, it's a string of coinkidinkies, because uh, the U.S. has also ordered another 126 F-35 fighter jets. They've also, yeah, of course... Yeah, they uh, also armed them with bunker busters, I saw. Yes, they've also rebuilt the entire U.S. Marine Corps into a purely amphibious force, even getting rid of their tanks, for example. How long do you think the war will last if it happens? Um, I think it'll be a long one. I think it'll be a, a really long one. Four or five years, probably. So you think it would expand into World War Three? I don't know if it would expand, honestly. I, I don't think China is in a position to expand the war much. Yeah, but like, wouldn't Russia take advantage of the situation? <laughs> With what? With China's aid, North Korean troops, oh, Chinese yeah. equipment... Like, China isn't going to have enough shit to spare. And even then, take advantage of what? Like, what What would Russia invade with all of this theoretical gear? I mean, um, Poland. Poland? Why? Why, though? They always invade Poland. And they always like invade fetish. Poland. <laughs> like they, they, they can't stop themselves. It's like, it, it, if they can, they march right into Poland every single fucking time. I don't do, know, do you know I'm... what the Polish national anthem is, Arch? I don't know. What is it? Poland is still here. That's how it begins. Ah, well, that's a good. That's a good yeah. national anthem. It is, but like, think about like what would happen in order for that to be a thing. <laughs> like... That is true. That is true. <laughs> and China too is very much so getting ready as well. Of course, um, they're not going to do it the next exercise around. I don't think. Uh, but it's going to be within the next two to three exercises, and then suddenly shit's going to kick off awfully, awfully quick and awfully hard. People say that it's going to be when the next U.S. elections happen. Possibly. But um, I don't think it'll be the next election. Like, it could, but eh. It's, uh, it's too foreseeable, huh? Possibly, yeah, and it's also just it, just because there's an election doesn't mean that there isn't a command system. It would be when there was the official transfer of power, if anything. So they would mm -hmm. need to wait for a president to have to leave. Yeah, like the new guy comes in and he still doesn't get the ropes in front. Yep. Do you think Biden would be a good war president? No, he's too old. Like, he, I mean, he doesn't have the energy stuff. to deal with that shit. And he certainly doesn't have the, the knowledge or the wherewithal to deal with it either. Hey, I'm really curious, like, what exactly does the president do during wartime? Like, he doesn't understand military and stuff, right? Like, he's not a strategic mind. But it's no, kind of weird, doesn't it? He is the one that has to authorize everything. So it really does... Yeah, but, like, do, do, do you really know? Like, like if, if you take a civilian, right? You take a civilian off the street, never served in the military. And he has to authorize stuff. Like, I, I get it, but, like, does he know what the consequences of what? It, it's like, okay, imagine this. You're sitting next to a StarCraft II pro player, and you have to authorize his build order and stuff. Yeah, because he will tell you what he needs to do. That's what the uh, military advisor Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're, you're right, you're right. But, like, would you know? Well, you would have to trust them. But, like, he, he goes, like, I, I want to do Zerg Rush, and you have no idea what a Zerg or a Rush is. 
Well, they do explain shit. Like, that is the entire point of your, your military advisors, that they're supposed to tell you what they're supposed to be doing. So basically, the advisors have all the power, because they decide what they can explain and what they can keep quiet about. No, because they do need to tell you everything. But that's also the problem. They overload you with information. This is why the, uh, the uh, fucking Iraq evacuation turned into such a shit show. Because they decided to do it on a completely different time schedule. Yeah, they wanted to coincide with 9-11 or something. Yes, because originally, uh, Trump had basically told them, no, we're leaving now, now, like this and then. And everybody's just shut up over there. It's like, okay, well, fine. But then Biden was like, no, 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 we're, we're going to stay for a bit longer. And then everything collapsed. And then they smelled blood because there was no reason to wait anymore. Because, of course, that wasn't the plan. So nothing was ready. They had to rely on the Iraqi army to do their job. And the Iraqi army couldn't do their job. Yeah. But, I also uh, heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but like, um, they ran out of, of um, uh, the type of missiles that they use in um, desert engagements, uh, because like they, they started ordering uh, supersonic missiles to fight into the China Sea. So like, they, they actually ran out of the, um, the other type of missiles that they need to perform in desert warfare. Well... I don't know about that. I don't know what the kind of missile that would be that wouldn't work in, you know, Iraq, but works. No, in... it's like uh, uh, so. So the type of missile that you fire from a helicopter, and uh, they, they instead of building those, they build the ones that are supersonic to, you know, engage in the China Sea. Like oh. they diverted funds from building those into building the other ones. Well, seeing as the U.S doesn't even have a hypersonic weapon. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Well, in that case, then my information is false. I, I would be surprised if that was the case, uh, especially as why, I don't know the what US they would have. have a... Why did uh, they not have hypersonic? Because hypersonics are hard. And then nobody's seen the reason to build them yet, really. Doesn't China have them? Uh, China claims to have them. Uh, Russia does have hypersonics, but they're kind of shit. The idea, from what I understand, is that they can't be um, intercepted. Oh, they can, but they're hard. Mm. But yes, the uh, the US-China we... shit is going to kick off. There is almost no doubt about it. And uh, when it happens, the US needs to have its ducks in the line. And that means control over newsrooms. I do believe that is the reason why Tuck and Don Lemon got eated on the same day, and there will be further firings after that. It is possible, though, because um, a lot of the things that Tuck would say would appear on uh, Russia Today. And a dev raid. Hello, dev. Uh, let's see. I'll do a couple more of the super chats as... Well, uh, HeroU45 says, In the US, we wasted too much money and resource on green energy, so we're unable to use the electric chair unless you have one of the cool states. That is true. Floor, like uh, California probably could not afford to use the electric chair because they can't afford to electrify their cars anymore. Uh, Mark Shame says, Why can't we just trans-youth into Thunder Warriors and Astartes like a proper civilization? That would be better. That would be much better use for them. At least we'd have a good use for orphans at that point, you know? I'm not very familiar with 40k lore, but didn't the Thunder Warriors go insane? Just a little bit. No, not too much, mm. you know. Mark James says, The reason why Antifa attacks the Nazis is because only a non-existent group would not retaliate. There is no enemy safer than an imaginary one. That is correct. Yeah, Stalin also made a couple of imaginary parties that didn't exist, and he arrested people, accusing them of being members of those parties. It's very effective. Yeah. So John says, don't oh, forget the, the Germans the... gave children to pedophiles in a science experiment. They did. The feminists created the Meninist group. The Meninist group. Yeah, before MRAs, right? Like, they needed an enemy, and they would accuse you of being a Meninist, because it's like a feminist, but it's like a Meninist. It's a very it stupid name, exist. too. It, yeah, it is. Like, that's why it didn't exist. Like, no one would actually create that. But they, they would go around and they would say, well, he's a Methodist. You know, it's like, what the fuck? 
Nolly says, it's interesting, Arch, because the famous anime trope is attractive women who, if the chest and backside is anything to go by, couldn't possibly be mistaken as being of age. As not being of age, I'm presuming. Hmm. The DC the Titan says condolences to Tucker and CNN disinformation audio. Do you know that um, Yuri from Face Quebec got uh, graduated the same day as Don Lemon left CNN? But not for the same reason, I imagine. No, but it would be cool if I would see Yuri at CNN mm-hmm. replacing Don Lemon. Didn't you tell me you were going to get trying to get her to the Archcast? Hmm? We. I, I offered an invitation, yeah, so um, if, if there is uh, a person that has uh, Yuri's voice and talent, you know, because, like, she can't join you because, like, she's under face connect contracts. Right? But but if such a person would appear and, and she would DM me, uh, then I would definitely invite her to come here and we wouldn't talk about face connect because contractual obligations and stuff. But, uh, you know, it would be interesting to talk about the VTubing culture and... Uh, the the whole um, you know uh, things that happened with Silvervale and Hogwarts and yes, uh, Silvervale uh, stopped, did not renew her contract, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, people claim that it was financial reasons, which uh, it could have, but um, she also casted some shade towards Iron Mouse, saying that uh, is someone a friend that doesn't talk to other people for nine months. And uh, Iron Mouse was the one that said, no, like, me and Silvervale are still friends. Hmm. So there were some shots fired over there. How'd you like running a company with uh, six teenage women, Arch? Yeah, it must not be a very fun experience. Can you imagine the ego, though? It's like a person that one day is just poor, living a normal life, and then they're a millionaire the next. With uh, like 200, 400,000 subscribers and they're earning thousands of dollars per stream. Yeah. I mean, they probably think they're hot shit, right? But they have to collab with other women that think that they're also that hot they're also shit. they're also hot shit, and, yes. Yeah, yeah, no, it sounds like a nightmare. Is, yeah, and the problem is that there cannot be two hot shits in the same bucket. Especially not two hot shit women in the same bucket. No. Uh, there's a lot of ego. Like, I actually know what happens in the some of these uh, VTubing agencies, like, behind closed doors. And I can tell, chat, like, some of these women, they absolutely hate each other. But, like, management, for some way, like, like uh, uh, the, the VTube managers are superhumans. Like, well, I, I can't explain how the fuck I they do it. I can tell you exactly they manage- how they do this, V. Yes. And, in fact, I can spell it out for you with four simple letters, V. Are you ready? Go on. P I M P. Oh. You know, like uh, when when I was at law school, and and you find some of the tactics they use, like burning people with cigarettes and shit. I I don't think they do that. No, but they they use the same sort of tactics. It, like it's psychological pressure. It's like, oh, but you don't want to quit. Like, look at all the money you're making. Like, you can't go out there. You'll be nothing without me, etc. Like. It is, it is the modern-day form of pimping, where you have a group of women that need to be kept under control and prevented from having women moments in close proximity with other women. I mean, the, the thing is, right, like, when you have a silver veil, um, which is already earning a lot, and she knows that at any point she can go her own way, well, I don't think the stick works. They can't because they own your fucking IP. Now, in the cases where they don't, then they can. Like, Silvail had her IP, so she could just fucking leave. But for many other people, that's not an option. And they also <laughs> learned a bit after, like, um, Kiryu Koko, who was able to, like, promote herself. Because you know, she seemed to have parted ways with the people on relatively good terms. So they allowed, you know, some promotions and some, like, secrets of what her new account would be. But for anyone else, like, is the if tomorrow, V, YouTube decided to just fucking yito delito your channel, just poof, as they do, how yeah. many of your subscribers would know about where to find you after that? Not many, but, but here's the thing, right? Like, this is different, because if YouTube yitos deletos your channel, you can't make another one, but 
um, in the case of VTubers, like especially big ones that have like millions of subscribers. So even Yuri, right? Like if Yuri from Face Connect would create a new channel, um, I don't know if she can still have like her old avatar, but like let, let's say she does it. Um, it would take a couple of months and she would get pretty much like the same subs back because she has this particular voice that people recognize. Um, and the reason people are there are not because of the avatar, but because of her personality. So I, I think like Yuri from Face Connect will have a really good future. I don't think that. No, I don't think so. Like, I think that people will not know where to look. Like, unless they're they're really hooked into, like, the uh, community or something where they can find people. Because even, like, when, when uh, Kibbs got his uh, channel struck a week ago, like, only a tiny percentage of his audience actually managed to find him where he actually then was active. And it was the same when I was struck for a while as well, because it's actually not easy to find one particular person on the enormity of the internet, and you've got to have a certain amount of conviction to even try. That is true, but, like, the bigger the audience, the more likely the event, right? Like, uh, No, the bigger like the audience, Yuri. the smaller the event. I, th I think, like, people like Yuri and people like uh, the, the Kettle, Pikami, right? Like, they have entire Reddit this, uh, just wrapped around them, like, the entire Reddit forums that, that are dedicated to them. Um, so... It's possible that it's easier for... Mr. Medicare is a brilliant example, right? So Mr. Medicare would, would have, like, various personas, like a Trinidad Aristocrat, um, Jim... What was it? Jim 61, Jim. Um, and then it was Mr. Medicare. And every single time he went off the internet, started a new channel, and then he would explode. Now, I do agree with you that it takes a while to grow back. Like, it, it doesn't happen uh, instantly. And we saw this with k which is Coco. Um, and with several other VTubers that just re-emerge with new personas. But, um, you know, like, like, like for example, Viri, right? Like, Viri was in Heaven X, graduated, and now she is uh, Pancake, right? Um, it, it's going to take a while when she starts streaming, but I guarantee you, like, she's going to go back to the same number she was in a couple of months. Maybe. But even that is the exception to the rule, considering how many people get yeeted. Though, I did uh, one thing that I all will to wrap up this subject, which is a deviation from everything else. There was one very interesting thing in the clip I think you sent me that I found particularly telling, uh, where she's clearly quite depressed that she's being eaters deleters, graduated, and she says... Like, why are the audience asks, like, why are you being graduated? And she says, I wasn't cute and funny enough. And that is literally yep. the truth. That is literally the no, no, no. observable Art. reality. Art, um, I, I found out that cute and funny is slang for lolly. Oh, maybe. But, like, yeah. like, the, like the entire she, point she is, is... She I don't is hashtag our gal, hashtag our... I don't, I don't care about the model. Like, that's irrelevant, frankly, because there's thousands of them, the same model, differing levels of popularity. No, 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 no. She, she's making fun that her boss... This was on April the 1st, right? She's making fun that her boss is firing her because she's not a lolly. I don't think so. No, no, no it, is, it is. Like, like cute and funny means, like, she's not a little girl, right? Yeah. That, that's what she's saying. So she's saying that her boss is graduating her because she's not a little girl. I don't think so. I mean, okay. Like, no, no, you can listen to the voice. Like, she's clearly not having fun with this. Like, this is not a happy, fucking oh, no, no, no. person she's making that. jokes. She's that, but, uh, like, she... No, she's she's basically insulting her boss, is what she's doing. It's like, maybe, but I don't think that's the point. No, obviously not. Like, she wants to, to talk about the issues that she's having, which is a conflict, right? And she's insulting her boss, but, like, very, you know, like, subtly... Because obviously, like, th there's other reasons why they're kicking her. Like, uh, apparently, it may be because she had another Discord where she was taking donations from her, her subscribers without uh, sharing that with Face Connect. So that may have been the reason, but, like, she can't say it out loud. So what, what she's saying is, like, oh, yeah, well, it's because my boss doesn't think that I'm cute and funny. Uh, but it's, it's not that. I mean, she is cute and funny, right? Like, if, she, if you listen to her things, she, she literally is. It's just that there may be other reasons that aren't disclosed 
which led to the termination. Well, that's the thing. We can theorize about all the speculative shit we want. But at the end of the day, their job is to be anime girls. Th yes. That is their job. Their job is to be fake as hell and attract an audience by being performers. And if you're not a good enough performer, you get kicked to the curb, as is true in all of these entertainment industries. But yeah. And well, in like the your YouTuber industry, no there are even fewer rights because you don't own anything. So uh, apparently, like with Face Greg, like this is very interesting. So I think she had to pay from her pocket. Like we don't know for sure, but like her model is uh, very expensive. Um, I think like uh, another Face Connect member, Lumi, uh, she had to pay around fifteen thousand dollars for her model, which is rigging and drawing. I may be wrong, but it's like a, a huge sum anyway. So it's interesting that they didn't get to keep their model. Um, in the case of Yuri, like she actually comes from a different agency, right? So it's not like the other Face Connect girls, like Pipkin Pipa, which had to um, audition and then she had an entire model drawn for her. No, like this is like her uh, coming from another agency with a model and joining Face Connect. And they're called Face Invaders, so it's a completely different contract. So what, what I'm surprised is that they do not allow her to keep the model. I don't know if it's like the model that she came with and she can keep that or it's the new model because she made a new one while at Face Connect. I don't know. Or it could simply be the uh, the contract itself, that they own the persona. Maybe, right? Like, what do you... It's so interesting. Like, a lot of people don't see the benefit of these agencies. Um, of course. I would say, like, if you're a nobody, like, you're, you, you're literally just wanting to start streaming, right? Um, the agency gives you a $10,000 model. Uh, sometimes they give you a phone as well. Uh, they give you publicity. They give you access to a network of people that are willing to work with you and collab. But if you're a person that's already a streamer, like you are, right? Like, let's say um, there were agencies that would promote male VTubers. Uh, you wouldn't benefit from anything to join one of these agencies. Like, you'd actually stand to lose because you already have an audience. Well, several people already did that too, but they gained larger audience through the agencies. Yeah. And I, that's, I just think that's that, the only that... reason why you join an agency, because it's uh, the short path to success. Yeah. But again, like, like, is it worth it though? Because let's say you get more subscribers, right? Like you're, you're now part of Hololive or whatever, and you have like millions of subs. But every time you get a super chat, you have to share it with YouTube, and then you have to share it with your company. They usually take like 30 to 40 percent. Well, yeah, no, it is worth it in that perspective, because you could be streaming to zero people or to 2,000 people. Yeah. But all of it could be taken away in an instance. Yeah, yeah, because you, you also have to follow whatever rules they have. And, and usually it's like, you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that. You can't play this video game. Like, this is apparently one of the Holo stars, which is a, a male uh, model for Holo Life. It's like, oh, I really want to play Hogwarts, but I have to support the cause. Have to support the cause. The cause. You know? It's like, what? Well, because they are abusive corporate structures. And yeah, in part, that's also sort of pseudo fine. It's the idle industry. It's always been there. This is just its recent coat of paint, but uh, you can still condemn it, even so. And I do, happily. Yeah. Now, uh, on to the, uh, the Florida thing, which I think is uh, even more interesting than drama with women. <laughs> because this is drama with men, as uh, Disney has now sued Florida the entire state for its targeted political witch hunt of poor innocent Disney. I um, don't think Disney has a case here, but what I think they're trying to do is that, uh, and we discussed this last stream, I believe they're trying to um, buy time until the Floridian elections. Well, in part, yes, they're trying to buy time because uh, 
their previous ploy about declaring independence until the death of King Charles of England and all of his descendants, etc., was revoked because it was ridiculous. But it bought them a couple of weeks, and now they're trying to do this to buy themselves a little bit longer. And this will probably be more successful in the buying time department because this is now a legal procedure, which is going to take weeks and months and maybe even years. Do you think the government can accelerate it and uh, provide Disney with a speedy and just trial, focus on the speedy part? I mean, to a certain extent they can, but there are certain rights that the uh, the various sides have to demand so and so much time to go through the evidence, quote unquote. That's unfortunate. Because there are also ways to, of course, slow this down. Uh, like the Trump hearings, for example, there was all the kerfuffle about how they were going to arrest the trump Then they brought him mm-hmm. in, talked to him for like a couple of hours, and then it's like, okay, well, we'll read your next November. Because the only point yeah, of yeah, that yeah. trial is to drag it out for as long as humanly possible. Yeah. But uh, I, I do think that they're going to be able to stall for as much as possible. And uh, it's going to be interesting if DeSantis manages to get reelected, which he probably will. He probably will, because the thing is, Disney is a perfect target for him. Disney is also trying to use this as a marketing campaign as well, as they stress that uh, they're the largest employer, they brought in 1.1 billion in state and local taxes last year, etc. Disney is trying to run a PR campaign to try and mobilize Floridians against DeSantis, because they are engaging in politics here. But Disney is so unbelievably unpopular now, and that the the cause they champion is so unbelievably unpopular now, that it's only going to turn people more against them. And it's also the fact that uh, a corporation can just say we're going to do everything possible in order to go against the democratically elected government. And if the government says, well, we're going to go against the corporation, that's illegal. Uh The company asked the court to find the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, that's the government basically, voiding of its development contracts to be unlawful and unenforceable because it allegedly violates Disney's property rights. So this one is a this one I find particularly funny because it's one of those little roundabout things. So Disney's property rights is the entire Reedy Creek Development District. Like yes. they they have claimed it. They have claimed this piece of land as their property entirety. And so any change to it by the government is in violation of Disney's uh, property rights. But it is the government that has granted them these property rights in the first place. So it's a wonderful little roundabout, isn't it? Basically, I thought that when they were complaining, it was about um, the government going after like their business, like raising taxes or, you know, like the stuff we discussed on the last stream. It's like uh, the the hotels around the the area and the roads being more taxed and stuff. No, no, no. It's, It's literally them going after their privileges that they don't like. Oh, of course. Now, they do have a point as well uh, when they say that uh, they are being the targets of a uh, car- targeted campaign of government retaliation. That is one of the arguments they're making. And they are correct, in a way, in that they started a fight with the government, and now the government is targeting them. The problem is that the government has several entirely legal ways to target you. <laughs> Like, if you choose to not pay your taxes, for example, the government has ample legal ways to target your ass. Yeah, but but basically, I, I think what they're talking about is being discriminated, right? So um, the, the government uh, like, like, like treats all the other companies one way, but they would treat you in a, in a way that's different. Uh-huh. Well, the thing is, that too is entirely legal like because that's the thing the government is the ones who decide what is and isn't legal straight up and this is also why the government is so goddamn dangerous and why you need to keep your eye on it but also why the government is begged in the corporation because the corporation does the exact same thing how many times hasn't youtube arbitrarily changed their terms of service with no warning and with retroactive effect just because they wanted to like, this is just what power does, but at least in democracy, you can vote out the guy overstepping. Whereas Disney, mm-hmm. Disney's already created their personal fiefdom where they've hired their own fucking police force. 
You I can't vote you them like, out of power. I, I love how you de decry that it's a fiefdom. It is a fiefdom. <laughs> it's not like that. This is why I love it. It's because it's accurate. This is going to be go on for uh, for quite a while, and it will be to DeSantis's advantage because Disney is only going to be a bigger crook as time goes on. Like Disney has lost all of their goodwill at this point, and DeSantis can just simply keep beating them as a pinata for the next five to six years. It's also the fact that. Um... He has nothing to lose by doing this, right? Like DeSantis, mm -hmm. for example, he actually loses in the polls if Disney manages to get away with this. Yes. Like, unironically, like like when Disney uh, managed to overrule uh, one, uh, sorry, when Disney actually uh, sued DeSantis, he lost in the polls, and and when they they didn't manage to win that lawsuit, DeSantis gained in the polls. Like like his political career is tied to fucking with the mouse. Uh -huh. You know, unironically. And this is also why the uh, the mainstream apparatus tries to claim the victory for Disney, because they recognize this is their guy in the race. It is interesting, especially um, due to the fact that a couple of years ago, most people don't imagine, remember, but like the Democrats were actually against Disney, and they were like complaining, it's like, oh, well, they have all these privileges and blah, 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 which is true. Yes, it is true. They have a ton of privileges that nobody else does. There is also the um, they made a Peter Pan movie. Have you have you seen anything from it? So one of the things is that they're very happy that uh, it has girls in it. But like in the original, it was like girls are too smart to fall from their bed. So that's why like there are no um, lost girls. So. I'll, uh, I'll bring up the movie poster here, and it is the most modern thing ever, isn't it? So yes, you, you, you've got a little... The, uh, the main character, I'm presuming this is Peter Pan, I guess. He's brown now, mm -hmm. because derp. Uh, yes. Tinkerbell is black, and she doesn't glow anymore. And the fucking... Okay, so why does Tinkerbell glow? Are you saying Tell black me. people can't glow, Arch? Like they can't be CIA agents? Yes. But tell me, why does Tinkerbell glow? Because magic. Pre fucking sisley. Because she's a fucking fairy. Like it's yes. <laughs> it's so goddamn stupid. It's like she is a magical creature, and so she glows. Like that is all the ins that, that is all the explanation you require. She's a fairy. Yes. But in the new movie, I think, movie I think, well, wait, wait, it was a pixie. a pixie. Yes, pixie fairy, much the same thing. And the reason why they don't glow, because they, they made a whole thing around this, was because the movie makers were like, well, why does she glow? That's not realistic. Where does the light come from? Bitch, I don't care. Her vagina. <laughs> she, is, she is a magical creature. The glow is part of that. Plus, she's supposed to be like angelic and crazy looking. Because also remember that she has magical healing properties and all kinds of nonsense, right? No, it's only if you clap, though. Maybe. No, seriously, like, it was a thing. Like, you, you had to clap. And it was only with the power of the magic from the audience that she could actually heal. Like, you, you had to believe that she can heal. Yeah, to like, believe. Some children found out that if you don't believe, that bitch healed anyway. Well, there you go. So, she's a liar, too. And the rest of it... So, Wendy, at least, is white, which is weird, I suppose. Um... There are lost girls in the Lost Boys. Uh, they're black. Yes. There's Asians in the Lost Boys. Uh, like the entire, it's just the classic ensemble cast, isn't it? Of just, well, back in the day, back in the day, ensemble cast meant that you had like loads of really cool dudes who would go on to do really cool thing, like um, Black Hawk Down. Do you remember that movie? Yes. Black Hawk Down was a great goddamn movie. Like, it had so many amazing actors in it, and so many people who were ahead of their time as well, because somehow the director just knew, like, oh, these people were great. So you've got Legolas in there. You've got go goddamn Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> it's goddamn brilliant. But I now, mean, did you know? it means that they've okay, followed well. the, the checklist for skin colors yes. and genders. Did you know that if you want to give... Um... 
to, to get an award for your movie, like the Oscars and shit like that, you need to have the checkbox. Yes. I believe that Even is if... actually an official requirement now. Yes. And, and if you look at Amazon as well, like it, it states on their website that whenever they're making movies, they, they need the checkbox. Yes. So this is why. Yes. Like even if they're remaking stuff, even if it's historical, even like all of these things, it doesn't matter. Like they need the stuff. It's also in uh, as a, a part of Disney's eternal quest to retain copyrights for all eternity because they can claim that oh no 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 this Peter Pan was made then and then so he's totally like a new character. Also, the the movie will feature the first uh, actor or something in a children's movie. You, you have to do that. With yeah, Down you know, part syndrome. Part oh. So, oh so inclusive. See, I wasn't so going to see it. I wasn't going to see it, but if it has like the first ever person with a Down I, I, I must. Like, what? Look, 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 Art. You know, this this got me sold. Like, I, I was going to keep the body in my wallet, but now the mouse, haha, literally reach into my wallet and I have to see it. Also, it's historic. You're going to be able to tell your kids that you saw the first ever movie by a commercial blockbuster film that had a actor with Down syndrome in it. And they won't believe you. It was like, oh, daddy. It was that true. And you'd be like, yes. I remember that day. It was 2023. It was Peter Pan. And I went to the cinema. I want to make another tiny little bit of a petty complaint here. So Peter Pan is now a little Indian boy which is, you mm -hmm. know, a very current year. But they didn't make him into an elf or whatever he was supposed to be because Peter Pan's supposed to have, like, pointy ears and shit. Like, he's not supposed to be just some some rando regular. No, was I don't remember that, actually. I don't know, he, See, he had elf ears. Little, little, little elf ears. Did he? Yeah. Let me, let me look. Hold on, I, I need to look. Uh, Peter Pan. He had little pointed ears. Did he? Yes. Holy shit, he did. He did. And he was red-haired. Yes, he was also a ginger, which is also one of the reasons why he's now a little Indian boy, because we can't have gingers, literally. We you cannot. Think, no, like, honestly, do you think this is literally to generate internet controversy? No, I don't think so. I think it's just... I, I, no, I like... I think this is no, actually it, look, look, just... Look, wait, the, the, you know, there, there is a saying in the British military, right? Like, once it can happen, twice it's a coincidence, three times it's enemy action. There have been, like, so many gingers, and literally, like, uh, Hermione in the new uh, Harry Potter remake on HBO, I am willing to put money she's going to be black. Like, oh, they, they are specifically targeting gingers. Because it's, uh, it's not progressive anymore to have a black Hermione. No. Yep, no, it's it's not progressive anymore to have a black Hermione. In fact, I found an article which basically said, um, in fact, I'll plug the video right here, uh, that a black Hermione now would be genocide. Would she? Yes, a black Hermione now would Why? be genocide. Uh, Why? Because Why she would, would erase black... the experiences of genuine black people of color, etc., who imagined themselves as Hermione as an inclusive character. But now... Since she's a mudblood? No, that was not a character. Mu no. Muggle. Muggle. I like mudblood better, though. All they can see is that she's a minority. And so it, it, Hermione has reduced them to minorities. Hold on. My brain is... Uh... All right. Let, let, so let, you're let telling me, me that... that look, look, look. If, if we travel back in history, right, and we have Stalin or Hitler, mm -hmm. and they want to do the genocide, and yeah. they're like, you know what we need to do? We need to cast a movie... We need to make it popular, and then, right? Like, like, all right. We need to cast the movie, make it popular, and after ten years, we'll make a remake and we'll cast that little girl as a Jewish person. Yeah. That's going to cause the. Is that is that what they're doing? Very possibly, but the argument mm. is so. Hermione in Harry Potter is a, a little muggle, uh, and that yes. means she's a minority, and she's like the only marginalized person uh, in the entire series. And therefore, her identity... Hold on, there, there's more muggles. There, I, I think, like, that Luna Lovegood was a muggle, wasn't she? Luna Lovegood is a stripper name, by the way. I just want to point that out. I did not know that. But, like, was it before or after Harry Potter? I'm pretty sure it's always been one, frankly. 
Alright. But, but like, right, right, right. There were more muggles in the Harry Potter. Okay, um, you also have the brothers, right? Like, like uh, the ginger had brothers and stuff, so, like... Yeah, but they were muggles. Was she the only muggle in the entire show? I don't even remember, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they weren't muggles. Like, the Weasleys? No, they definitely weren't muggles. They're not even a minority because, uh, like the mud, the muggles are the majority. You like, like the whole lore is too, that... didn't you? The, the, okay, no, <laughs> hold on, hold on. So the, there's like mud bloods, which are like regular human, right? No, no, no. And the mud no. blood is like half, half. No, mud blood is a common modern day term for half the breeds. Yes. But, oh, okay, right. So, you you have like the humans. And, and they don't do magic. No. But they're not the minority. They're actually the majority, which is why the wizards have to conceal their existence. Because, like, the humans outnumbered them. So even with their magic, they wouldn't be able to fight all of the humanity. And, and the whole thing with uh, Voldemort is that, like, why are we hiding and why aren't we oppressing the humans? Yeah. A am I understanding the lore correctly? No, well, like I'm sorry, muggle, I wasn't part of the LGBT community when I grew up. So Muggle is I anyone who doesn't have magical abilities. Yes. 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 Okay. Which so is why the not Rangers minorities. are not Muggles. Yeah, but like they're not they're not minorities. They're they're actually the majority. I don't know about that, because she is a minority because she's a minority at Hogwarts. Because the only okay, thing that matters right. in the wizarding world is the, is the wizarding world. Everything else is irrelevant. Okay, I let see. me let me well, put well, it like this. Let me let me put it in a way that you would understand. The wizards mm. are white people. Yeah, but like they're the majority. No, so, so like her body is like a white person in Africa. Basically. Yeah, but the the white people are the minority, be and yet we're still the majority. That does make sense. Yes, like, but like in this case, it's a reverse. Yeah, but it, it is. Like she's no, the minority, it, but it, but it actually... is an exact comparison. White people are the minority, but we're the majority. Honor. In, in social justice. Yeah, yes, more or less. Yeah, yeah, but in, in this movie is the opposite. Like, like Hermione is the majority, but in Hogwarts she's the minority. Yeah, but that doesn't matter, because it's the same like a black person in America is the minority. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a white person in Africa. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, but the white person in Africa is still the majority. What about that, like a, a white person in Tibet? A white person can never be the minority. It's like by law. I see. Yes. There must be like an exception though. So but, this Oh, I know, meant... I know. Oh, okay, the Schrodinger's white. If he is Jewish, then he is both the minority and the majority. Check beta. And so this, this meant that if you made Hermione black, then all she was was she would become a stereotype for blacks and progressives. That would be all she was, and then that would be genocide. Because you'd be making who, fun who of decides this? Like you know, th there were some people in a Discord server, right? And they were farting and sniffing each other, and they were like, "You know what we think? If Hermione was black, actually, actually, it would be blah 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 blah, blah 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 blah." Regardless, black Hermione is genocide. I don't know. If it is, fine. Whatever. I'm taking it. It is. I'm taking it. It is. It is. Black Hermione is genocide now. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not... I'm not taking it back. It is. I agree. I have been enlightened. I educated myself, as they say. But I don't think that's gonna stop HBO. Like, I think the Harry Potter TV show is probably... It's gonna be almost like the whole... Um... The whole uh, Morbius movie stuff, almost, where everyone's going to be yeah, like, "Oh, this is going to be a huge success," and it's going to end up flopping massively. Because the reason why Hogwarts was a success was in large parts because the right wing looked at it and went like, "Okay, this is this is kind of cool." Plus, it hurts the people we don't like. Let's back it up, which is not going but to be the case. Reason, for okay, show. no, I'll, I'll tell you why Hogwarts was a success. It's, it's, it's not necessarily like right wingers looked at it. the The trailer for the game was awesome. It's like, okay, you're playing a wizard, and everything looks fucking cool. It's just like in the movies, right? Like, the, the atmosphere and shit like that. And apparently, like, the people who made it actually said that we're going to focus on making the atmosphere 
just like in the movies. And, you know, like, there, there's a lot of attention to detail. And I know there's a lot of diversity in it, and it doesn't make sense. Like, black people within that time period in the UK, it's like, okay, fine, whatever. Like, that, that's the, the checkbox that we're talking about. But the environment, the, um, the buildings, the, you know, like, all the attention to that was put in. Um, and that's why it was a good game. No, because all of that is after the fact. All of those things are things you realize after you've already picked up the game. Arch, would you not have bought the game? No. I would no. not have picked up the game unless it was for the controversy. And I know like I know I hmm. know most people that I know of wouldn't have done so without the controversy. Okay. Like it would be very, very interesting to like remove the quote unquote right wing backlash to Hogwarts Legacy. And see how well it does. That would, that would be very interesting. Because I wonder how large a percentage that that contributed to its success. Because without it, like, imagine a world in which there was no right-wing backlash to Hogwarts Legacy at all, right? And mm -hmm. you, all it was, was every fucking gaming site, every internet site, every media company going, Hogwarts Legacy, bad, 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 bad. How many normies do you think would then buy it? I am curious, though, um, just how many, how, how should I even put it, uh, how, how many people still trust the websites and the mainstream media? Well, I would uh, then point towards the Trophilophagus and say that despite trust in mainstream media sources being lower than ever, four years of 95% negative coverage still managed to yeet Trump from office for Joe Biden. Like, even if people don't trust the media, it has to do with the cultural saturation. If everything around you tells you that a thing is bad, even if you know better, you are going to be affected on some low level. And for the majority yeah, of people you're... who don't think about this, all they're going to see is, well, that thing's bad. I guess it's bad. I guess what you're trying to say is that uh, the media can't sell a product, but it can ruin a product. Definitely. But uh, that is, of course, the issue with Disney again. To return to that, um, Disney's not going to be able to get back that goodwill. And they're not trying to get back that goodwill. Like, it's going to be a very, very long time before they even begin to learn their lesson, I think. And by that time, by the time they begin turning things around, there might not even be a Disney. Have they uh, insulted their customer anymore? Because, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, all companies are woke. How do you know which one to boycott? And I'm like, well, you boycott the ones that flat out insult the customer. Like, for example, uh, Bud Light, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, uh, our customers were part of this uh, fratty, out of touch culture. <laughs> you know, like when you do that shit? Yeah, that's, that's not good. Disney hasn't been doing so yet. No. But I'm sure they'll get to it once the... Uh... They're coming for your children. They're coming for... You know that song? Yes. Oh, it was a really catchy song. I like it. But it, it should be this Disney theme song because like, that's literally what they said. And as the backlash like gets were... harsh enough, they'll start harshening <laughs> up their rhetoric and eventually will arrive there as well. Uh, there, there were like uh, several Disney higher ups, and they're like, that their entire purpose is not to make movies, is to make propaganda. And I'm thinking like, I don't care like what type of propaganda would you be doing. You can't be doing Christian propaganda. It would still not sit well with parents because it's not your place. Your place is to entertain. Period. I'm sure they'll maybe get around to starting insulting people. Well, they've already kind of begun. They were calling people racist over the Little Black Mermaid, which will only get worse once it flops. You know, Disney actually coined that shit with Star Wars, like the the insulting the fan base thing. Did they? Fan baiting is is called now. Fan baiting. See, the thing yeah, is, you bait. I don't. I don't think it's a tactic because it doesn't work. No, it literally is. I, I know insiders. It's a marketing tactic. Right. The issue is, it doesn't um, work. Yes and no. Uh, there, there's a new video released which talks about a company called Parrot. And, and this is a company which um, basically tells Hollywood whether something is going to be successful or not. Uh, Parrot Analytics, it's called. 
And one of the things they have in order to measure the analytics is people talking on social media about the movie. So even if you have no intention of buying the product or supporting the company, and all you do is like, you're like, fuck this company. That is considered in their engagement to decide if something is good or not. This is why they consider Lord of the Rings a success. This is why Lord of the Rings gets a sequel. This is why they consider Velma to be good shit. Like, they, they have like a, a way of tracking. I, I will show you the video after we finish the stream. Because it's very insightful. And they actually show how they track which movies they do good and which one do poorly. And Hollywood really takes into account their decisions. The thing is... It don't work. Simple as. <laughs> because it, it's the old adage, no p old PR is good PR, which simply isn't true anymore in the modern world. Like, you can easily see this on the macrocosmos of a YouTuber, for example. When a YouTuber, yeah. take Dev, for example, recently, <laughs> decides to piss off his audience, what happens? People leave. It causes an increase in chatter about the person, but you still still see people unsubscribing. It is the microcosmos. You can see this in every see, YouTuber who has had like big drama with their audience. People leave. See, you say that, but then you have Dark Side Phil. Yes, and Dark Side Phil is uh, how many million subscribers does he have now? I don't know, but like I remember, like he was playing mm -hmm. a video game, right? And, and he was like, "I see people in the chat saying that this guy is racist. I don't care." Right? Like, if, if you see it, you bat it, and you shut the fuck up, because I want a game. Like, if anyone brings something up, I will ban them. And then and then he looms like a tyrant over his chat, right? Like, he, he literally looks at the chat for, like, 20 seconds. And I'm thinking, like, man, like, this guy spent decades bitch-slapping his chat into this submission. Like, like the people were terrorized of him. Like, uh, you know, like, the audience, like, like Yuri from FaceConnect calls her audience hostages. No, Dark Side Phil has hostages. Like, I don't, I don't fucking know how he does it, but the man is a genius. Like, like, he controls his chat like a pimp controls his women. The thing is, even that is just the people who are willing to be a hostage. It, that is literally having streamed out everybody else and having emerged of the people who enjoy being beaten. I do not know how he did it. Like, I would not be able to do it with my chat. Like, if you paid me, like, V, here's a million dollars. I don't care what happens to your chat. I want you to get your chat into the same mindset that DSP's chat. I, I would not be able to do it. Like, that is an art form. Which also sort of proves my point. Like, again, like, all PR is not good PR anymore because people listen to what people are saying. It's not difficult. Like, especially it's not difficult for Disney. Like, Jesus Christ, it's Disney. Disney has no issue letting you know that they're making a movie. Like, they have no problems whatsoever. They don't need PR. They need good PR. Like, I if think, you like, were some fucking is... startup company, then yes. Every, all PR is good PR, but Disney ain't it. So I think like what, what, what is happening is like you have your chat, right? Like how many people are there? 886, right? You have to like make something where you get the chat to argue amongst themselves to drive comments, right? Like that, that's what they're trying to do. So it basically say that your chat is separated into the good people and, and some are bad people, but they're very few. And you want to get the chat to argue with each other so that the, the comments, the buzz, pushes your video up the algorithm. This is what Disney is trying to do. Yeah, but they're failing. Yeah, of course they're failing, right? Because it's, like, it's, it's a very delicate thing. Well, no, it's not you a very push delicate too far, thing. It, It's very hmm. simple. You're not making your audience argue because you're doing the thing that they argue about. Mm. Like, it's... <laughs> if, if you whip out your dick... They're not going to be arguing about that. They're just going to look at you and go like, well, why did you do that? And there's going to be some weird people that are going to defend you, but most people are just going to attack it. Because people aren't attacking the broader left anymore. Like, nobody's doing debate streams anymore, are they? They're attacking Disney. Which is why Ron DeSantis yeah. is currently, you know, involved in this whole battle with Yeah, and, and he's very popular and stuff, yeah. Disney is going to lose this protracted conflict, I'm pretty sure, but it's going to take uh, a good decade, probably. And hey, by then, we'll be at war with China, so we'll have other things to worry about. Okay, Hopefully some more not. super chats. Uh, Much same says, don't forget CNN fired the Don. They did indeed, as another part of uh, shoring up their media apparatus. Was Don Lemon anti-war? 
Yes. Well, he, he was, and he was too unreliable. Don Lemon said all kinds of stupid shit that he clearly was not uh, pre-prepared, not pre-cleared to say, shall we say? Hmm. Well, actually, the only thing that I remember which you said that was problematic was that um, there was, like, this middle-aged lady, and, and he said that she wasn't in her prime because she was, like, 40. And uh, th then he's like, well, I would say, like, uh, 30. Late thirty is the prime. Like, like he immediately backpedaled to to some other unreasonable statement. Uh, but that apparently really got him into trouble. Uh, you know, he was literally accused of fucking raping the bitch, right? <laughs> that that was uh, no, no, no. I think it was with a man because he's gay. Um, he's been accused of assault. He's been accused of rape. He's been accused of abusing people, like people on the staff. Don Lemon is not a very drama-free person. No. Well, like, it's interesting that not, none of those things is what got him fired. And, and by the way, exactly. apparently... None of that was, got him was, fired. None of that got him fired. And apparently, he, he was called by the management to discuss renewal of contract, or, like, how, how they can move forward. Again, they were trying to bring him to heel, but I don't think even that happened. I think they just yeeted him. No, I think it did, because, like, uh, so, so apparently he goes on, makes a tweet, says that, yeah, you know, you know my, they didn't even have the courtesy of inviting me, yeah. And, and CNN goes, like, actually, I did invite you, and, and he refused. Yes. Um, so, do like, you uh, believe like, CNN? You <laughs> I like, believe I that Don Lemon is fake news. I believe that he, he, like, I, I like believing that even beyond the grave, Don Lemon is, CNN, is fake news. If Don Lemon dies of old age, you know what's going to, writ to, to be written on his tombstone? It's going to be written the day he died, and it's going to say, you know, best news anchor ever. Like, he, he will spew fake news from beyond the grave, man. The thing is, in this kind of circumstance where you have two high-profile news anchors getting yeeted on the same day, you've got to look for the commonality. And the commonality here is both said people, said things that uh, weren't on script. And there's going to be a lot more news anchors fired uh, over the next year or two as well, but they won't be as big. That's why they got these two out of the way on the same day, because that way they'll overshadow each other. Hmm. It'll be interesting. I don't know. You think uh, uh, there is a possibility that it's a coincidence? No. Hmm. <laughs> Straight up. Mark ashamed? Uh, no, I don't know. Paul Demock says, Hey, hey, people, at V, uh, Jordan B. Peterson will be in Bucharest on the 2nd of May. Will you be there? P.S. La de la Basescu. Basescu is uh, an old Romanian president, but uh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, like, like, Bucharest is like 300 or so kilometers away from me. It's, no. And, oh. and to see what, Steve Peterson? No. Are, you, are you deving right now? And you're like, it, it'd be cold outside. I can't go to the thing. No, like, like it's, it's the, look, if you were in Bucharest, that would have been a different story. But it's Peterson. Like, why? That's true. It's not that I don't like the man or anything like that, but no. I just said you don't like him enough. Yeah. I mean, what, what were his latest hot takes? Um, he threatened the, the, the Canadian Prime Minister that if he takes his car, consequences will never be the same. Um, what else did he do? Because I remember like he did like two really interesting things lately that made me chuckle. I don't even know. Because I don't even know <laughs> if I'll, I I'll care. Have to... Yeah. <laughs> He's basically being an edgy boy now. And I'm thinking like, what, what are you doing? Like, no, you're not, you're not going to do anything if they take away your car. <laughs> That's true. It's like the same thing that, uh, okay, you want to you want to see me get my audience in a tizzy? Okay. Mm. Audience, Americans particularly, when the government comes for your guns, you will do nothing. You will you will look the officer in the eye and he'll say, please, Mr. Officer, come into my house and take my gun. Because that is what will happen. I think some Americans may do shit. Like, like can, you, can you imagine, like, the... Um... The ghettos where, where there's a lot of gangs and stuff. Like, do you, oh, yeah, do you they, they, they won't take their guns. You, you think they won't take their guns? No, they'll take their guns when they have a reason to take their guns. Like, it's the same with um, APBs. An APB is not there for people to go looking for you. Or, like, uh, it's it's when 
you get picked up for something else and they'll put your name mm-hmm. in the computer. Then they'll find your name and they'll be like, oh, you're wanted for this. I think the way they, they can do it in America is if you stop manufacturing bullets. And a lot of America, I know how to manufacture my bullet. Yeah, sure, sure. You do. How many other dormies do, you know? Not many. So you but, stop yeah. manufacturing bullets, you stop selling guns, you stop selling uh, accessories. Regular people, the cops are just going to come to your house and they're going to take your guns and you will do nothing about it. Like, in fact, they'll probably get the majority of people to come deliver their guns to them. You think it's going to be like the vaccine? It's like, um, oh, yeah. at it, first, there's incentives. Like, you, you get you oh, get yeah. a bonus if you turn in your gun, of and course. that is the stick. Yeah, no, of, of course. First, they're going to tell you, oh, you know, it'll be a crime eventually. So, you know, if you hand it over now, nothing will happen, and they'll give you or, something Or you get a tax it. cut. Yeah, you, you get a tax cut. You get some money. You get, you get like some free McDonald's. You get a stamp. You yep. can go to McDonald's. Get you a get burger. a thing. And then eventually it'll become actually illegal. And then they'll be like, oh, if you hand it in now, we won't charge you. And so on. And they'll just run campaigns like that for a few years. And most of the guns will be off the streets. The rest, they'll just go seize. And the ones in the hands of actual criminals, they'll get it when they get Because the thing is, here's the thing. The government... Let me get conspiratorial here. The U.S. government don't give a shit about ha- guns in the hands of criminals. They don't fucking care. What, what are the criminals going to do? Rob the White House? No, of course not. They're going to rob you. They don't give a shit. They give yeah, a shit the about like, the uh, arms. It, it, they they the, care the about mass The thing that the Americans have going. The, the, the thing that the Americans have going is the Constitution, right? So, yes. like, they, they would actually need to change the Constitution. And I don't think... That oh, after no. the, the last no. riot, where, where you would go on every single channel and you get like a hundred reasons why you should have a gun. I don't think like that debate is going to, to happen because it's over. It's, right? like the, the gun, it's not going to yeah, be a no. debate. They're going to wait until there's one shooting too many and they'll slowly change the laws and the constitution will remain and they'll just redefine what the right to bear arms means. Like they've already have. Hmm. It is true. Like a lot of the regulations, like the the founding fathers didn't envision for them. Yeah, no, of course. Like the, the the Second Amendment already says that you have the right to bear arms, straight up, no no restrictions whatsoever. Yeah, like but that's not the rules. A, a yeah, that's yeah. but that's not the rules. Like you can't, you don't have the right to bear arms in most U.S. states. I don't know about most, but in many, like you can't concealed carry, for example, or you need a license, or you need registration, or you need training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's already been infringed. It's just a question of time mm-hmm. until they infringe it all it's the way. It, they even added, like, shall not be infringed. Like, that's the funny part. Yes. Like, like out, out of all of them, it's the only one that they, they even went. It's like, okay, well, they're, they're going to try to, like, let, let's, let's add the extra. Because, again, the government doesn't give a shit about guns in the hands of criminals. They don't care. They give a shit about guns in your hands in large numbers because you might decide to use them against them at some point. That's the only reason. Well, I, I think, like, uh, the, the best explanation is, it's like, oh, the government has F-15s and blah, 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 F-16. And, like, yeah, first of all, didn't uh, Biden just say that uh, the Capitol riot almost overthrew the government, right? And they didn't have F-16s. But the second one is that when the government wants to impose tyrannical shit, it doesn't have, like, F-16s patrolling the street corner. It doesn't have, like, F-16s knocking at your door asking for QR codes. It's actual police officers, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, police officers would be afraid to patrol and do their job if, like, they find out, well, you know, their colleague went to ask for the QR code and for the papers and got shot. Uh, and, and they're going to just say, no, we're not doing this. Like, it's it's too risky. We're not, we're it's not, It's not right? going to happen. Because, okay. Right. So, what you're saying is that there's a scenario in which a police officer goes to a dude's house and goes, knocks on their door, like, hello, sir, I see you're registered here with a firearm. Like, no. Nah. Kills him on the front door. No, ain't gonna happen. That didn't happen though. No, it happens in, in like in 0. 0.0000000000 in percent of occasions. No, no, no. I mean, like in the course of human history, it has happened. Like a government that tried to be tyrannical and people had guns. Like that's literally what happens. Yeah, okay. Because like if, if you, yeah, if if you push a person to like despair and they're like, okay, if I lose my business, I lose my livelihood. And they have a weapon. Like, they're, they're actually going to try to defend it. All right. Um, how, ma- how many modern civilizations have been overthrown by modern rebellion, by rebellions? 
Well, no, because like they usually take the guns before that shit happens. Like usually, mo- most governments, like if they want to do tyrannical shit, they first disarm the population. Yes, <laughs> that, that's the thing. Like the uh, government overthrow in the modern world is extraordinarily rare, and it happens yes. almost exclusively via civil upheaval rather than armed revolt. Because the actual civil wars, like the shit going on in Syria just keeps going for all eternity. Yeah. Civil war like, is just not very effective anymore. I forgot the I, I would have point. to look into it. But, but, like, most countries do not have, like, a reason for a civil war. I don't know about that. I mean, like, uh, no, look no, at no, the Middle no, East or Africa. Like, think, no, no, no. Like, think about it this way, right? Um... The lifestyle you have now is better than that of a medieval king. Yeah, and we're talking about the average citizen. Yeah, yeah but they, they don't... V, nobody cares. Mm. Like, I don't fucking care that I live better than a king. I care about my gas prices. I don't give a fuck. I, yeah. I don't look at the pump as like, oh, gas is like fucking 30 bucks now. Well, at least I, I'm living better than Charlemagne. No. I don't care. No, but like, I, I think like the, the only time that people actually go out and actually protest is when they're hungry. Like, I don't know what it is about hunger, right? Like, you, you can take people's rights away, you can take their guns away, you can do everything. The moment people go hungry is when they when they actually start rebellion properly. I mean, looking at America and its long history of mass protest now, I don't think that's true either. Yeah, but, like, Americans never actually did win hungry. Oh, well, exactly. So why are they protesting all the time? Why are the French protesting constantly? Isn't that a good thing, though? Because, I, you know, you, you keep hearing Americans go, it's like, oh, well, the tree of liberty is watered with the blood of the patriots. And then they're like, oh, why are the French protesting for their rights? Oh, look, they're cutting their pension. Why, why are they staying in house? Why, why are they protesting? Yeah, like, again, like, people are protesting all the time. They're not going hungry. hungry. It's because our standard of living has changed. And so our standard of uh, our expectations of the standard of living has changed. It's bread and circus, right? So, like, if you take away the bread, then people protest. And because they have bread, they're not protesting. I mean, you know, they, they are protesting, but it's not to the degree that they, they would actually be willing to overthrow a government or something. Well, it depends on the overthrow of the government, because most of the time the overthrow of the government is not the plan. It's something that happens pretty much whilst they're going on about something else. That's the thing. That is true, yeah. Yeah. It has, it has, has a like consequence the... of another movement. Usually the government gives in to their concessions as well. Like, like it, when things go really bad, the government backs down. Yes. At least that's what that. happened in Europe. Like, I mean, for, for example, um, in Austria, they wanted to criminalize people who do not have the QR code. Like, literally, straight to jail. And they backed down on that. Because they looked at what happened in other countries that tried it. So, so it's not like... I, I mean, in a way, you're right. You know, but at the same time, you can see that the governments are willing to back down if enough people protest. And you, you would need actually enough, like a huge number in order to make the change. Well, the thing is, too, that when the government really wants to do something, they will they don't give a shit. Like, look at the Dutch farmers, for example. They've been protesting as much as they can, as hard as they can. They've done major protests. They've been on the news. Did they get anywhere? Yeah, but like how, how much percent? of the Dutch population are farmers. And, and how much really of matter. those actually protested? Like, how many percent of the uh, Ukrainians in Kiev of the total population? They overthrew the government. I think, like, the difference, though, is, like, what, what governments try to do, right? Because it makes it sound it's like, well, it's these people against the government. In reality, it's these people against other people who are supporting the government. Right? Because, like, almost every single time, you, you will notice, like, for example, Black Lives Matter protests in, in the United States. There were a significant chunk of the U.S. population and the corporations that were supporting BLM. So it's not like you, you have, like, people against the government. It's, it's like the government and their supporters. Well, yeah, the, in the case of the BLM protest, that was not against the government. That was something the government enjoyed. That's all that it keeps going. But the thing is, is, again, is, it's really hard to overthrow a government. The government has all is, power in the world. The government has to actively surrender. Didn't the, they, they actually elect a new party in Dutch, which is, like, massive in percentages? I don't know. It, it, it just has, like, one single thing. It's like, 
we, we don't want to fuck the farmers. That that's literally their mandate. And and they, they have like a significant chunk in percentages in the polls. Uh let me see. There's one mention that they got like um fifteen Senate seats, so twenty percent of the vote, the farmers party. So there you go. Yeah, but yeah, that is that's protest. Insane, isn't it? That is them going but, uh, through the that is them becoming the government. Yeah, yeah. But but like I mean that that still counts, right? No, I, no, that you, you does do not the protest. Count. I mean, I, because I that's think, like, that's not a protest. protest. That is you no, becoming sure, a political I, party and becoming the government. Sh sure, but like without the protest and seeing, uh, you know, like people seeing on TV how the farmers are treated and hearing their grievances and stuff like that, I don't think they would have got like twenty percent. Sure, but then that's not a protest. Ah, well. Okay, fine, but but it's like a symptom of it is what I'm trying to it's say. It's the same, like, uh, and we can look at all the times, like, the, the truckers in Canada. The trucks in Canada were crushed. Unilaterally crushed. Uh, there are still people on trials over that. Nothing happened. True, I was going to walk away scot-free. The people who are in jail in America right now over the insurrection, that too was crushed. Nothing's going to happen. And there, there's no, there was no will to insurrection there. Yeah, and no, the Dutch true. farmers like, were crushed, and their only hope now is to go to the to go through and become the government. How how much percentage of the Canadian population supported the truckers? I don't know. And how much of that percentage actually was willing to go out and protest? A very few. But well, that yeah, is also that know. is always the truth. Very few percent of people are ever going to go out and protest. Unless they're hungry. That's my point, right? And this is why the government takes away the guns. Because if they want to do something that will get people to be hungry, they want to make sure that people don't have guns. You know, if, if people don't have food at all, then it doesn't matter, really. Yeah, It's not like... No, no, no. See, that's the thing. Like, being hungry doesn't mean you don't have food at all. It means, like, just, like, 40% off the plate goes away. So, like, if your standard of living decreases to the point where half of your food is gone and, and your shopping cart is empty, then, well, that's when people go out and that's when the government doesn't want them to have guns. Uh, I think at that point they'll be overthrown by peaceful means, honestly, by a protest rather than armed insurrection. I think the time of armed insurrection is long gone. Yeah, probably. At least I mean, for armed, armed insurrection, insurrection as in actual, you know, guns and civil war insurrection. Yeah, like, like what you need would be two conflicting ideologies and you need to have like generals and politicians on either side, basically. Or lots of external cash, because uh, yes. one of the leading causes for revolutions is other countries wanting there to be a revolution in your country. Hmm. Yeah, like many places in Africa and as you mentioned before, Syria. I also did like the whole Arab Spring, where people like, well, oh, the Arabs are rising up, the people are rising, this means democracy. No, the Arabs are religious fundamentalist Muslims. This means <laughs> Muslim rule. And that was exactly what happened. It's like, we would like to vote for a theocratic government, please. Freedom for it's, us um... is not the same as freedom for them. Yeah, it's kind of like, okay, so you give them democracy and then they vote Sharia. Like, what do you do? Yeah. What do you do? Well, you, you flee Iraq. flee <laughs> Iraq. You know, like, the problem wasn't uh, that much of democracy in Iraq. It was diversity, inclusion, and equity. Like, apparently, they were forcing um, the representatives to have women in it. And some women who never saw their constituents got elected. And there were riots over that. Well, I mean, that's fairly stupid, I guess. Yeah, like, like they weren't just that? importing democracy. They, they were, like, just importing the American way of life. Well, that's the thing, too. Again, not everybody wants democracy, tragically. I don't even know if you true, to say tra tragically. Like, some people just don't want I mean, democracy. Uh, well, well like, like, think about it this way, right? Like, if you literally believe that there is a sky daddy, and, and he has, like, a way for people to behave. And if they don't behave that way, he, he can destroy the Earth or, or he can cause, like, hurricanes and stuff. If you genuinely believe that, like, it's it's not like a hypothetical. It's like you, you literally believe that's the case. Then, yeah, you must think that democracy is evil. Like, the only way to go is to follow his will. Uh, 
V, what does this have to do with anything? I don't know. We, we got sidetracked. <laughs> well, I shall return to Super Chats. Yes. Mark James says, fourth estate, fifth column. All the same. Oh, I don't know about that, but... Uh... At least in part, yes. Uh, Midwest Finest says, Is there a chance that liberals can get gaslit enough to accept maps in the US eventually? One would hope they would fight it, but they're weak. Um, well, yes. I don't like the term liberals, but it's, it's very, very simple. What is the progressive argument against pedophilia? Like, literally. What, what is the progressive argument against pedophilia? I'm trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> there must be. I know. No, there, there, there isn't. Like, there genuinely there must be. isn't. Because they've already basically said that... You, you remember uh, Walsh's little nonsense thing where he went on about talking about how he wanted to do, uh, you know, play with children too, as all progressives do, where he was explaining that it was about uh, power imbalances imposed upon them by capitalism, and that's why banging children was immoral. So in a communist society where there would be no power imbalances, it'd be fine and dandy? Yeah, Frederick Engels, uh, which, you know, like uh, most of the Soviet Union, um, they, they had like Marx and Frederick as their main uh, thinkers, basically. Uh, he he was very big on orgies and uh, liberating children and stuff. Oh, liberations. Yeah. It's liberating, you see. The, thing is, the, the progressives is. don't the, have yeah, any the, argument well, against like, it. Well, I think about... The, the the family unit is oppressive. Like yeah. they they make they, yeah they make you follow things that are irrational, right? Yes. They make like you like that's the rules. difference between the left and yeah that's the difference between the left and the right. The right believes in family. The left believes in institutions. Um, so you, I'm I'm still trying to think of an argument from from a woke standpoint, but it's very difficult. Because there isn't one. Because... Like, that's why every time they have to go back on the conservative one by saying, well, I don't like raping kids. Like, okay, I agree, but how do you justify this within your philosophy? The thing is, though, um, and I notice this a lot, like when the left tries to smear one of their own uh, or, or to smear someone, they, they will go for racism, they will go for sexism, they will go for transphobia, right? When the right tries to smear someone, they go after pedophilia. Like, like they will accuse him of like being a child molester, mm -hmm. and that is why because like the right uh, tries to protect children, while the left tries to protect grown adults. Yeah, that's a good point. But no, it is it is inevitable. Uh, the only reason that it hasn't happened yet is that there's still enough conservatism within the left to not bow down to this completely. But the moment they actually begin to embrace their own ideology, uh, yes, there, there, is, there is no progressive counter-argument against it. That is kind of the problem. Mark James says, Given the US's recent track records in fighting wars, one with China would be a fatal mistake, saying as one who served the Corps for 13 years. Thing is, if America is smart... It won't actually fight a war with China. It'll chill off its coast and occasionally bomb some of its shit, keeping, out of, uh, keeping it out of Taiwan and Japan, and if they can, South Korea. And then they'll just sit around and wait until the China collapses, basically. Which it will. A few years of um, mass blockade by the West, enormous levels of starvation, maybe blowing up the Three Gorges Dam if the Americans are feeling particularly spicy. China will absolutely collapse. But if America is still uh, char still run, run uh, by the same generals who did shit in Iraq and Afghanistan, who are like, no, you know what? We can liberate the Chinese people. We can bring them democracy. We can win their hearts and minds. Then America's going to lose. I don't think they want to do that. Though. Yeah, I, I don't think they, they want to do that. I don't know. Like, the like, culture is... The, the culture is way too difficult. Yeah, the uh, culture like, of fucking Iraq was way too different. <laughs> mm, that is true. But Iraq didn't have, like, the same weapons and nukes that China does, so... True, but, like, if that mindset prevails and America tries to convert the Chinky Winkies, then America will lose. Because they'll try to invade China, and you don't want to do that. You d <laughs> the famous saying, don't fight a land war in Asia... 
holds true to this day. Mm-hmm. But so I... long as America just chills off the coast and starves China, there's no way they can lose that war. But again, that yeah. depends on that uh, relies on America not being retarded. I do think like uh, the the nukes are still a thing, right? So like if you if you actually did the land war and you went in, yeah, no, it's going to use nukes. nukes. Everybody knows what using nukes means. Like they're just not. Yeah, you think so? But like if you're losing and you're like, well, there's nothing left. Like that, this is the only solution. Yes, but that's assuming that's the only solution, which it isn't. Like, basically, what'll happen is, if China feels like it's losing bad enough, it'll send an email to Biden's uh, fucking uh, spam account and be like, Biden, we'll, we'll nuke you. We gotta have negotiations. And Biden will look at his generals and snore, and they'll be like, yeah, we assess their conviction to do so to be serious, then they'll be like, okay, okay we'll negotiate. Yeah, it's probably the, what, what I've been saying, right? You, you won't uh, have Nuremberg trials anymore. Right? Like, if, if you expect that, you know, like, Putin is going to be dragged and trialed and stuff like that, no. 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 It's because nukes, right? Happen. Yes. Yeah. Not unless uh, the, the Third World War will be fought almost as much in people, amongst people, as it will be on the battlefield. Like, there will be agitation groups, there will be infiltrators, there will be uh, literal Solinsky tactics, etc., that will be where it is, because America will want to try to get China to rebel, and they'll probably succeed. And China is trying to get America to rebel right now, but Americans are still a little bit too fat and happy for that to be particularly likely, at least immediately. Yeah. That he's um, I says, like except much... for lying about troop levels in Syria. I don't know if that's relevant. I wish there were, like, time marks next to the thing. Time marks? Yes. Well, like, this happened at this point in time, because then I'd be like, okay, what were we talking about then? That'd be nice. Uh, Maximum Pum 17B says, Sonic missiles, too much work and not enough return. Yes. It's also because we didn't need them. Like, America is invading Iraq, Afghanistan, these places. They're planning on invading, like, maybe Iran or something. What the fuck are you going to need a hypersonic missile for? Like, seriously? But now that everybody else has them, America will eventually need to have them as well. Because it's the same thing with the um, the Chinese long-range anti-air missile, the PL-15. The PL-15 is vastly superior to the current generation of American AMRAMs. Which means America is gonna have to make their own Super AMRAM at some point. Because the Chinese made one. But up until that point, there was no reason to do so. It would just be really expensive. Well, it's also uh, who you're fighting against, right? Yes. I mean, if, if you're fighting Russia. against uh, a, a country which uh, that doesn't really Lee. even have, like, are you going to repeat my point back at me? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I, I thought like uh, your, your idea was that everyone has them, so America has to have them as well. No, nobody had them, and that's that's why now that like Russia has them and China has them, now America needs them because they might actually have to fight them. Yeah, but you don't you don't really fight missiles with missiles. The, do you? How do you shoot down a missile? I mean, um, from what I saw in uh, that that space uh, TV show with with with, with the, the the spaceships and stuff, like they would fire like a lot of bullets. Uh huh. Yeah. What what was it called? How do you um, shoot down a missile traveling at like thirty thousand feet? With buckshots. Buck you, you, you fire. Yeah. Yes. But a lot of buckshots. The? Never speak no. about military matters ever again. <laughs> no, the the primary ways of intercepting missiles is with other missiles, because they fly too fast and too high to be engaged effectively with guns. Like, uh, you can oh, know, engage targeted that. missiles against ships with stuff like the Sea Whiz, but that's only because you know where the missile is heading towards you. I, I know what else they can use, though. Uh, lasers. Uh... Sure. Well, we just need to find a laser much. that can heat up the missile enough within seconds, I guess. Uh, I think they actually have, like, laser defense system on, on ships. Mm, yeah, but those aren't for destroying the missile. They're for fucking with their guidance systems. Ah, uh, I see. Because you can look up, for example, the Israeli system has been very effective. The Iron Dome, uh, it's exclusively... Uh, 
uh, missiles that does most of the work. They've got some, like the uh, the gun thingies. I think they've got a 35 millimeter uh, anti-missile cannon. But the thing is, these things only have a range of like a couple of kilometers. Like you, could, you can't defend all that much shit with one of these things, which is why we use missiles, because missiles have range in dozens of kilometers. I mean, uh, I, I got like 20 DMs. Uh, telling me it's like, V, abort, do not talk about weapons, remember who you're talking to? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> Is V drunk casks, chat? It's like... Now, it's theoretically, yes, you could use a laser, but the thing is, you need to heat the missile up enough to actually detonate it, which would be a stupid amount of energy. Now, you can use missiles, however, to blind IR, um, or lasers to blind IR. That's what we use lasers for now, to fuck with IR targeting systems. Yeah. Or with uh, TV, uh, TV guided missiles, too, but nobody uses that shit anymore, except for the Russians, I guess. Is that the one where um, you, you actually uh, have, like, a wire connected to the, to the missile? Uh, well, yes, but we call that wire guided more correctly. TV missiles is where you literally have a fucking TV in the firing craft where you guide the missile onto target directly via controls and a TV camera in the missile. Yeah. Uh, Flexing Potato, his very first super chat, thank you very much, sir, says, Hey Arch, have you ever considered doing a speculative video on Fulgrim's loyalist clone returning to the fold? I think GW wasted a lot of potential with his character, and I think you'd do the character scenario justice. It's a very interesting idea, isn't it? Because I love the idea of Fulgrim tearing himself loose from the painting and going out doing shit. I don't know how I'd frame it as a video, mind you, but maybe. At the very least, it's a, it's a good idea to keep in the back of my head. I don't know who Fulgrim is, but... Oh, you should. Mark James oh, says, Seattle Police Department on Aurora Avenue is known as Seattle Pimp Department. Oh, well. At least they're doing something good. Uh, Mark James also dwarf. says... Upper Echelon, formerly Upper Echelon Gaming, did a video on a consulting group that basically drives Hollywood marketing. Uh, more states have found charges against Trump, he also says. I don't know who it's, Upper Echelon is. Um, they, they make uh, interesting videos. Um, it's kind of like uh, they're not talking about what the media says. You know, like they, they actually do reporting. And uh, in this situation, they found um, Parrot Analytics, and they're the, the firm that your super chatter is talking about like they find trends uh on youtube like, like for example they will say well this is how the algorithm works and this is what it does um they, they will find the um, in this situation the the parrot analytics website and it's like this is how the media uh misrepresents why these movies are popular when they're shit hmm sounds like uh basic bit shit i don't like it because I can tell you why these things happen from a much more political point of view. I don't need the numbers. I have heart. And yeah, tears. but like he, he describes the mechanisms through which Shh, they happen. We don't need mechanisms. We need heart. Not a hood. Unironically, I, I'm get, getting a little bit more on the Sargonian bandwagon of the idea of metaphysics when it comes to a lot of this shit. Okay, I don't need to understand it in order to hate it. <laughs> Insane hippie, hippie, niece, hippie, insane says DeSantis just messed up his chance for me to vote for him with his signing HB 269 without getting a provision that violates the First Amendment. He also going out to Florida sunshine laws that force government transparency. Well, there's a the thing. DeSantis is still a politician, which means he's still going to do everything in his power to give himself more shit and you less shit. And people just need to realize that that's what politicians are. Simple as. Politicians are bad people. I mean, like, unironically, we you, need to arrive at a point where politicians are a generally loathed class of people. Like, people should just you get hate Romania, them. then. Yeah, you get Romania. Uh, has Romania any politician that has been in active office for more than 15 years? I mean, yeah. Then you don't but hate, I them hate them enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Boxman of 117B says, Peanut Butter Falcon already beat Disney to it. 
I don't know what a peanut butter falcon is. Me neither. Never heard of it. Uh, it has pink writing, so. Oh, it's it's a movie with a Downs kid in it. Well, there you go. Disney always claims it's the first ever. It, it, like, uh, there's, I think, like 10 or 15 movies I'm... that Disney claimed they have the first gay ever character in it. I'm sure they worded it in the correct way. So, like, this is the first ever movie with a gay character uh, with a leading role or a gay character with a supporting role or a gay character with who is by a role or a gay character with mental disabilities that, that's or whatever. That the first gay kiss. Yeah, yeah. Yep, the first gay kiss, the first gay hand-holding, whatever it takes. Yeah. Groundbreak. Black you know 1917. You, you... No, V. No, V. No. Bad Go me. on. Go on. <laughs> no more side uh, distractions. Uh, Black Knight 17 says, Hail Arch Christ, our Lord and Savior. Also, hi, V. I finally woke up in time to catch one of these. That is good, V. Hello. That is good, V. Good Black. Black. He also says, A mudblood is a wizard witch born from muggles. Oh, there you go. It is. See, it is actually Harry Potter too. Mudblood. I get to use I it knew, now. I knew that. I knew that. See, I don't I, know about that. you corrected me, and I believed you. It's because mudblood is also, I'm pretty sure, just a just a slur against mixed race people. <laughs> At least that's how I use it. Okay. Do you do this with guns with me? Like sometimes I say something smart, but but you say it with such confidence that I believe you, and and I think that I do not understand guns. No. But you do with Harry Potter. Yes. Nice. I mean, I was also correct. It is still just a slur for mixed race people. It's just that it's also a term in Harry Potter. I'm going was, to ask ChatGPT. I was double right. What is a mudblood? I think it'll report you for that, but go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Twisted Frenzy says, From what I remember from the books, Hermione wasn't a ginger. She just had a bushy brown hair. It's the whole Weasley family who were gingers. Yes, that's correct. The Weasley family were gingers. Hermione was just black. So apparently, okay, this is interesting. Uh, it did start in Harry Potter, but some racists used it in real life towards really? minorities. I mean, shit, I've been using my blood wrong this whole time. So, so like, you're right, but for the wrong reasons. Because you see, in no way we have several terms for mudbloods. Because I don't know, for some reason we just were like, this is a term we need to use often. Uh, for example, for for example, that's the English word, yeah. Uh, that's that's one. Uh, mulat. That's another one. That one's based on mulatto. I know we've had a fascination with mixed race people here in Norway, I guess. Uh, Sodipa is another, which is also referencing to half melted snow. We've got quite a lot of them. Mm. Margaret James says, V, disagreement with the party is counter revolutionary, and that is the same as genocide. That is correct, too, because you would allow yeah, genocide to happen. I can't refute that. Uriel Holsen says, one of the reasons they were so hard to find Kibbs is because Twitch has an awfully UI LMO. That is also true, but remember, he was also streaming on Twitter to uh, one person, me. What, Twitter was he has... doing one of those Twitter spaces? Like, Twitter like, has streaming hold... now, and it's kind of awful. I mean, uh, so is that Twitter spaces? I don't fucking know. Uh, so basically, like, you don't see like video, you just... As little as you know about guns is as little as I know about Twitter. Well, I know something about guns, so you must know something about Twitter. Yeah, something. Like, I can hit the Twitter button to make people see what I was talking about at the time, for example. No, I see. V, just for shifts and giggles, what's the difference between a clip and a magazine? A clip is the one that you put in a pistol, and, and, and a magazine is the thing you put in a rifle. There you have it, Chad. That's the difference between a clip and a magazine. But I, I, what, was I wrong? Yes. <laughs> but I want Chad to enjoy that for a while. Black1917 says, There are multiple states that have come out and not only taken the public stance against what you're suggesting, which the Dems tried under Obama, they've also stated their willingness to arrest any federal agents attempting to enforce it. That is true. There are states in which uh, seizing guns is deeply unpopular. But there are also states in which it's not. So a clip is a device that is used to hold cartridges or bullets together in a specific order. Yeah, it's the shit that goes in a pistol. What the fuck? On the other hand, the magazine is a device that is attached to a firearm, 
that holds and feeds ammunition into the chamber of the fire. Yeah, chat. Clips are attached to pistols. Get used to it. <laughs> Malware. Okay, so clips. Oh, okay, clips are easily uh, reloadable, apparently. While magazines are devices reloadable. that are actually attached to the firearm and hold the ammunition. Are they actually attached to the firearm though? Because they're detachable, you know. This is what ChatGPT is telling me. So unless you're saying it's lying. Well, it is lying because the 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 benefit of a clip isn't that it's easily reloadable. It is that it allows for the easy reloading of the firearm. Yeah, it's like in Half Life. You you drop the clip in the pistol and you put the other one and it goes chick chick. Yeah, you put the clip in the pistol, chat. You know, it's not fair, like, taking me from the country, which has, like, the, the most restrictive gun legislations in the fucking world, and you're mocking my knowledge of guns. Like, I already know more than every single other Romanian put together. Like, I, I know gun safety, Arch. Do, do you know gun safety? Like, for example, look, you're not allowed to put your finger on the trigger unless you're willing to fire, and you're not allowed to point the gun at someone, even if it's unlo- No other Romanian knows that shit, right? It, it, like, I'm the orc that knows how much 4 times 4 makes. Like, it, it's impressive for an orc, Arch. Well, that is good to hear. Yeah. 427R book says, To my recollection, Muggle equals human without magic. Hermione was a first-generation wizard born to Muggles, welcomed by neither community. Oh, there you go. Everyone... See, I don't get this either. Everyone's like, we really hate Hermione. She's a bit of a bit... Hermione's kind of hot, Okay. She's played by Emma Watson. I don't see why people would dislike her. See? Nobody has an argument. Black Knight 17 says, Disney may not be insulting their customers directly, but their employees are. They also sit back and say nothing while the media and other platforms' publications actively attack their fans by name. Well, of course. That's uh, just their lapdogs doing their duty. Malawal says, Why do politicians who say that guns should be banned have armed guns surrounding them? Shouldn't they practice what they preach? No. Because the entire point is that there are some rules for them, and there are some rules for you. And the rules for them is that they get to rule over you. And that's pretty simple, really, when you think about it. I love how you framed it. Also, I, I completely forgot about it. This is a nice little quick throwaway topic. Uh, Vice is uh, is shutting down its gaming service, V. Did you even know they had a gaming service? No, which is why it's getting shut down. It's the same thing with Kotaku. And, and the same thing with... Uh, what, what else got shut down recently? BuzzFeed News. Yeah, like... Uh... They don't even exist to piss me off. Like, like usually I know it's like, oh, this exists because it pisses me off. But like in their case, they're going bankrupt. It's like, oh, this thing existed. Like, do people well, still read BuzzFeed News? No, people don't <laughs> still read BuzzFeed News. But like, this is another one of those things that nobody knew about and nobody cared about. But it had enough random investor money to keep going because the company had enough random investor money to keep going. But again, now that the money is finally drying up, they're finally... Thank good old Jesus, starting to die. And my God, I am so happy that they are finally starting to die. I have been waiting a long time for these things to die, V. And finally, the day is upon us. But it's kind of like... It would have been nice if it happened like years ago, but now I just don't give a shit. You know, now it's like... When, when you finally have the villain of the movie die, but like he's already of old age... And, and yes, he doesn't but, do much. You, know, you still gotta rejoice in his death just a little bit. So, okay, listen, this clip, a clip is what you use to feed the bullets in the magazine. The f okay, so you use a clip to fill the magazine. Okay. Yes. There you go, chat. Is Clips are what we use to fill magazines. Oh and we'll just put up Vice's 404 page here to entertain people. I will find out what a clip in a magazine is. I, I will tell you next stream, goddammit. <laughs> Matt Diff says, Don Lemon has been the outs for a while. I don't think this was a coincidence, but I do think someone woke up to whispers that Tuck was getting the uh, Ave. They pulled the trigger to hide in the shadows. Probably. See, some people are agreeing with you here, V, uh, that you 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 fill the magazine with clips. 
I tried my best. Okay. Like this, 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 you're, like you're if, as, if this is not good enough. You're as I'm close as you are likely my... to be. <laughs> like, and to be fair, chat, there are you. you could use a clip to fill a magazine. I just don't know why you would. It's theoretically possible. Uh, Spear Silver says, I lost it in a boating accident. Whatever that means. Uh, Doman says, Man, the Jedi Survivor game is stupid. That Kibbs was playing. Also, the US machine gun, Paradrop, and Paradrop in general, is overpowered in COH3. Yes, it's very fucking annoying to deal with. It, it, is, it is annoying. But, but th there are ways against it. So, um, if you have Paratroopers of your own, you can Paratroop behind it. Yes. And if you have mortars, it completely makes it useless. Sort of, um, it's, it's, uh, the setup weapons are very much so the meta right now, so you need to bring a lot of setup weapons of your own to deal with it. It's frustrating. Yeah, the, the way I do it, though, is just have mortars. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing people are doing now is they bring, like, two machine guns and two mortars, so now you're gonna bring two mortars to kill their machine guns fast enough while they're dodging their mortars. Yeah, but we're talking about early game, right? So, like, they, they don't have that many. It's like the paratrooping ones, right? So, like, you're paratrooping a machine gun in front, and you're using that in order to hold the position, right? Like, if you if you know that you're fighting against the U.S., and they're having that tactic, then you just make a mortar team. Yeah, but then you need to protect your mortar team. But yeah, but the, the game starts, it. right? Like, what, what I'm saying is, like, how to counter that particular tactic early on. Like, after that, yeah, you go into the game and... They, they build different units. Hmm. But it's actually, uh, like, it, it's bad for the uh, the U.S. because, like, if they take damage on that mortar team and they have to retreat it, then they lost a lot of manpower. Mm, yep, that's true, too. Fuzzy Thinker says, Politics rests on the aggressive minority. The majority submit in passive fear of any show of force. Well, considering the general chaos of the hood, I don't see the progressives winning any wars of attrition, starvation, all that. You are in part correct, uh, but it's also, uh, it's it's because our majority right now is very passive. Because our majority doesn't really see any point. Like, the thing is, the majority right now are still the normies of the 90s and the 80s, our golden age. Where we pretty much all agreed that we were to let to let and live, live and let live, like the, our, we had a golden age, unironically, on our hands. Whereas now we are entering the dark ages, and the majority still hasn't realized that yet, and so they are unwilling to use the authority of the majority against the minority because they're like, well, that's wrong. Don't worry though. Give it another ten, fifteen years, and uh, we'll be seeing some actual oppression starting to kick in eventually. Probably, yeah. I mean, the way things are going, I, I see like every single government mm. figuring out like how can we be more authoritarian. Like yes. the European Union is actually talking like how to censor social media more, and I'm thinking like, well, yeah, but like in the past, you know, a democratic country wouldn't go through your mail. They they wouldn't like check your correspondence. They wouldn't listen to your phone. It was the Soviet Union that did that shit. Yep. That was the thing. Back in the day, we could lo we could talk to people from the Soviet Union and say, like, we have freedom. Now they can look at us and go, like, well, in Russia, at least, we're not LGBT. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, they have other problems in Russia. Like, there were police officers that were stopping people uh, on the street to look at their phones to see if they have, like, any uh, anti-war propaganda. Yeah, on but their isn't phones. that fucking cute, though? Isn't that fucking adorable, V? Like, in Russia, because they the police needs yeah. to stop you and check your fucking phone. In the U.S., they just check Twitter's backlog. They yeah, don't exactly, check your right? phone. They're already monitoring yeah, it. Yeah, no, literally, literally. Right, like, because a lot of people were saying, oh, my God, look at Russia doing it. And I was like, yeah, because they don't have the technology to do it yeah. any other way. They don't have the technology to just check you, your phone continuously via your phone. The phone company doesn't help them do it. I don't think it's like they don't help, though. I think they can't. Like, they don't know how. Uh. The Kirby 0886 says, Hey, 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 that's true. They got tanks. The government does have tanks. Which is also why a civil war against the government is difficult to get done. And which is why the Syrian nonsense still keeps going. Black917 says, They already tried that with the red flag laws and forced buybacks both failed miserably. Because the will wasn't there. Like, again... 
the, the let me let me say this: the government isn't going to just take your weapons randomly, because there needs to be the political will to do so. Only when there is the political will to do so, will they actually do so. But when they do do so, when that political will is there to send people to your house to go get your guns, people will just hand over their guns in 99% of circumstances. Okay, I know it. Alright, listen, listen. A clip has a little spring, and a okay. magazine does it. No, All right, the magazine chat. has a little spring. <laughs> we'll go with the first one. There you go, chat. A clip has a spring, whilst a magazine does not. No, the magazine has the spring. <laughs> because like, like like when you when you load a MG42, it's a magazine, right? So it goes like the 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 the, the, the so, so I need, no wait no 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 not the MG42. The weapons that fire automatically, they have a spring. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Does the MG42 magazine have springs inside of it? No. Why not? Because, like, they go sideways. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Like, it needs a loader. It needs, like, another guy to hold that. So what do we call an MG42 magazine, then? A clip. Ah. Oh. There you go, chat. MG42s are fired via clips. This has been the most fun I've had in a while. I hate you, Mark. Mark Shame says, To the government, political criminals are more dangerous than violent criminals. Correct. Like, obviously. Like, again, as cynical as it sounds, and, and obviously, I am exaggerating somewhat, because we wouldn't have police if the government didn't give a shit about, you know, violent crimes, etc., obviously. But yes, no, the, it, there's a reason why in, cry, in countries with, like, uh, political crime laws, etc., they have very, very strict punishments, often far worse than just merely mucking somebody. Do you know that in the Soviet Union, we had, like, two types of laws? Uh, oh. You had, like, the basic bitch penal law, which is, like, for robbing, raping, and then it was, like, the ideological law, like, crimes against ideology. Literally, that's what I was called. Oh, the chat is asking, do revolvers use clips or magazines? I don't think they use either. Hmm. And you know what, Arch? You know what? The more I think about it, I think that in the case of MG42, it's neither a clip nor a magazine. I, I think see. it's something else. I don't know what the fuck that's called, but I'm willing to bet it's something else, which is why you asked the fucking trick question. Uh -huh. Actually... I'm going to uh, find out how it's called. But, but it's definitely not a clip or a magazine. Actually, uh, revolvers use clips. No fucking way. Get the yeah. fuck. No, they don't. No, they no do. you, you load every single fucking bullet into that little hole. No, because we figured out a mechanism to load all of the bullets into all of the holes simultaneously. Oh, it's like it's like that circular thing that holds all the bullets. Well, a speed loader is technically separate, but there are revolver clips, uh, which are little plasticky things, which you can have all of the bullets inside of. Hmm. I didn't know that. But speed loaders are another thing as well. Speed loaders are cute. But there exists uh, revolver ammunition clips, which is rather cute. Here, chat. Look. Look with your little, it's, it's, little it's, gun. It's called a belt. The chat is saying it. Daryl Holson says, Lollier, I don't know about Arch, you're really greatly overestimating the mental health and nationality of our people. Many of us kill ourselves with the gun also already. I mean, that is true. Uh, Mark James says, have to be a gunman in the post-Second Amendment cyberpunk dystopia era. Have a gun, never fire it. The powerful will still have their guns. The powerful, yes. The people determined enough. Artemis Fowl says, 27 states are a constitutional carry without permits. 1980, there wasn't any issue of permits selling guns. We had a, have eroded the restrictions since. Yes. Restrictions have always been eroded. Um, Xenothium15 says Arch has gone from himself to Nick Rikita to Tim Pool in the span of 25 minutes no like I, I genuinely do believe the gun thing like again they, they will require a whole lot of political outcry they will require a lot of political will etc but when you have arrived at the point when the police officer is knocking at your door 
people will simply hand over their weapons because people you know I... cooperate with the police. Simple ass. You know what? I think it will be the first step in cracking down. Um, they'll probably use like the corporate power, so it will be like Visa and Mastercard not allowing you to buy bullets or anything firearm related. That's a good point. Yeah, the Visa go like, no, 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 like we stand with the community. You don't get to have this. And then yeah, do they make and, it and impossible course, to buy them with cards? It's not going to be uh, impossible to buy firearms, but it's going to be very, very difficult. And it's going to be very difficult for um, uh, gun companies to do business. Because like, if, if you want to advertise on the internet, if you want to uh, have an online store, if you want to do any of those, you won't be able to. And the next thing is, of and course, be- that uh, just with the Pride movement, they go like, oh, no, 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 if you use Visa, we would not allow uh, gun stores to use our services. Yeah, like literally, it, it will be treated like porn. I, I think like porn is the benchmark for that. Like that, that, that's what they're setting up to. It's like, let, let's see if we can have a system where we can pressure companies to just not have it. So, for example, the Unity store, right? Like the, the Unity, um, it doesn't have porn on it. And I don't think it's because like the people who run the Unity engine really give a shit. I think it's the, the credit card companies telling them. So they can do literally the same with guns. It's like, you're not allowed to have commercials on guns on your platform. You're not allowed to promote any type of gun content, blah, 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 blah. And what are you going to do? It's like, my private company can do whatever it wants. Yep. Then they'll slowly begin making it uh, uncool, like they'll be do, doing propaganda around it, etc., They'll make it into the talking point of the old ants. Like, no, no, weapons are bad. They kill people and stuff. Yeah. Which they're already doing, mind you. So it'll just be uh, more of the same, really. But hey, more of a good thing is hardly bad, right? Right. I look forward to my American friends reaching my point in Norway where you can't have, like, a fucking BB gun. Literally, it's illegal to own BB guns in Norway. I just want to point that out real quick. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same in my country. Uh, Raging Bull says, Arch, don't trust the media. Arch, oh, the Dutch protest did do nothing. The media told me. Goes back to watching Cuck <laughs> Well, they did do nothing. The protest did do nothing. Now, they did establish a political party afterward in an effort to become the government, which is them doing something. The protest achieved diddly dick. Do shotguns have clips or magazines? That depends. Shotguns can have both. What kind of shotgun? I, 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 tried, I tried using like a trick question. Well, there are shotguns with magazines. And I know. I'm pretty sure you can get clip loaders for certain shotguns too. Wait, there's automatic shotguns. Like, um, I'm pretty sure, wasn't there, there was that stupid shotgun with, like, the under the, under the barrel loady thing. I think that one had a clip system. I don't know, I don't know know about shotguns. The one where you, like, literally, um, yeah, 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 I, I managed to find it. There's a, there's a clip for that stupid thing with the, like, uh, the magazine under the barrel thingy. God, that looks weird. That looks weird. Well, I suppose that it, hmm, it's called a hmm, maybe. Hmm. It's like theoretically they call it a speed loader, and I suppose that's correct. I guess then we have to delve into the question: what is the difference between a clip and a speed loader? I guess. That Art. looks very retarded. What's a bump stock? Um, the bump stock, which is now illegal, I believe. Was... And that, that, that's what I wanted to say. It's something illegal. That's yes. That's that's what I. Well, yes, it is illegal now. Uh, but the thing was, it was, um, I don't know the exact mechanism, but basically it, I think it used the recoil in some way to, like, help you press down on the trigger or something, because the whole thing was that it increased your rate of fire, I believe. Yes, it, uh, it actually made the weapon automatic. I don't know if it made it automatic or... Well, no, I, hmm, see, I'm just looking at what I'm right now. I guess it kind of could. I don't know. I haven't looked into bump stocks much. All I know is they increased the rate of fire, and that's why people made them illegal. Or, well, they made them illegal because they were used in the uh, uh, Las Vegas shooting thing. Yeah. It's true.
Uh, Jackie Boy says, Art is a certified millennial American in mindset, apathetic and nihilistic, which stemmed from angst and disappointment. Men after my own heart, LMO. <laughs> there you go. I knew that would rile chat up a little bit. Uh, Mark DeTame says, majority rule is a myth. Uh, nah, I wouldn't say so. Not when the majority knows they are the majority and are not ashamed to use their powers as the majority. Black1917 says, We're fat and happy and violently dedicated to keeping it that way. I wish that was true. Because if that was true, you'd be far more violent than you are. Uh, Mark Shame says, Phoenix had a longer range than Amram. It did, but was the Phoenix... Phoenix was never developed properly, was it? Uh, I thought it was just experimental nonsense. Um... Right, is the is it the one I'm thinking about, or is it something else? Because no, was that? Yeah, no, I. I hmm, what did they make that fucking thing? I have no idea either. Because I, I would love to help you. Because I, I thought may didn't it transition over into the um the aim, uh, Phoenix the fifty four or something. Because that one has a, I think I don't think it has the same as good range as the PL15 though. But that was radar guide, and it did have longer range than the Amram. Do they even use those damn things anymore? Yeah, they do. Present apparently. Yeah. Hmm. Apparently, it's never been deployed in combat though. In fact, the only records of it being deployed is in Iran, of all places. Ah. <laughs> the yes, the only uh, that's that's hilarious. Yeah, no, the U.S. doesn't even use them anymore. Uh, apparently, the only people using the AIM uh, Phoenix right now is the Islamic Republic of Iran. Well, that's funny. Still, it would probably be hilariously outdated by now, anyway. It says if memory serves, it was developed in like the seventies or something. Mark James says, Arch needs to kick V's ass and Gibbs at a game of Command Modern Operations. You have no idea how much I wish Command Modern Operations had multiplayer. It would be a lot of fun. We can play Werno. Uh, I think I'd kick your ass in that too, so yes. The only game where you can't kick my ass is Company of Heroes, because I played more than you. Oh, I, al I already have kicked your ass in Company of Heroes. Was it like uh, 2 to 1? Two to one? Yeah, the score. Like I beat you twice and you beat me once, if I remember correctly. Because we played a lot of 2v2. 2v2? Yes. No, we played one one v one, which I won. Hmm. He has made up his own story. We should play again. Didn't you say you'd uninstalled it? I can't reinstall it. Oh. If you want to play a 1v1, if you want to play 2v2, then no. But like, if you want to like, show me who's the man. You should play with me and V. Me and V, yes. V should play with me and V. You should play with me and Kibbs on Mondays. It's kind of fun. But that would be a 2v2, Arch. No, it's I, I for 1v1. It's three of us. Yeah, I, I do that. Like, the more people you add, the less likely I will to play the game. We can play some Warno 1v1s. That would be hilarious. I do not know how to play Warno yet. You will never lean and learn how to play Warno unless you play Warno with us. That is correct. But like, I, I we shall play Warno on Tuesday. Mm. Kind of soon, but I'll, I'll see. I wish Command Modern Operations and Multiplayer. It'd be hilarious. Lucian says the dude before was talking about the Bile Clone. Ah, oh, the fa oh the Fabius Bile Clone. Oh, that one didn't they? That one died, didn't it? I'm pretty sure that one died. Well, my memories are off. Black917 says, The states that are anti-gun not only failing to attract more people slash businesses to move there, they're experiencing an exodus. Look at California. That is true too. But will the Californian refugees vote differently when they arrive in Texas? It doesn't look like it. You're just going to turn Texas into California and California into Texas. And so this wheel will spin. Tag the Mage says, Clips are for watching. Magazines are for reading. Duh. There you go. Green. Why is the chat so brutal to someone that's like struggling, you know, like going from zero to other? Like, I, I didn't grow up with guns in my hand like Americans do. 
You know, like when I came out of the birth canal as a sovereign citizen, I didn't have a pistol in my left hand. Like, I, I had to learn that shit. Do pistols use clips or magazines, V? So John says, V, a magazine is a rectangular container of bullets with a mechanism to push the bullets into the chamber to fire. The spring. The spring. A clip is a slip of metal that holds the bullets together for ease of loading like you see with a garand. So when I said that magazines have a spring, I was right. Sort of. It doesn't need clips to be a spring. Clips do not have a spring, Arch. No, clips what do, do mean not it have, doesn't have What What else can it be that's not a spring? There are alternative loading mechanisms. Uh, they even tried to use gravity at one point. It was a terrible idea. It didn't work. Mm. Oh, it's, it's why when you play like those uh, old World War games, like the, the thing goes on top. Uh, that was the idea that they didn't use, need to use a very powerful spring. Uh, it's also why they tried to load magazines on the side for a, while, for a while, because they didn't have the technology to make springs like good enough. Uh, it was one of the teething problems of the um, uh, Krag Jurgensen rifle. I see. So, yes. like in, in those video games where you put the the magazine on top and and you like they press, it's usually on a rifle, like a World War II rifle. Is like they they're using gravity in order to do that? Uh, well, no. There there will be springs inside of those, but the springs were often huh. weak. Uh, one of the issues too is that the springs weaken over time. Uh, so you you kind of you need to switch out the magazines, otherwise the weapons start jamming, which is why the spring is an imperfect solution. But it's the best we have. Mm. Also, you know chat. they never do that in the video games. Like no yeah, weapon jamming. Not Danish. Anyone who says otherwise will be banned. Did, did you notice they never do that in video games? Like have your weapon jam? Because it'd be really annoying. Yeah, but it would be an interesting game mechanic. No, it'd be an interesting game mechanic the first time it happened. The 15th time it happened, it would be an interesting rage mechanic. I think, no, 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 hold on. There was a game that had it. I think it was Far Cry 2. And uh, basically it was like another reload, like you would punch the weapon or something. But uh, the way uh, it would work is that you had like weapons that were cheap. And, like they were like secondhand garbage. And then you had like prime weapons and the prime weapons wouldn't jam. But like if you had like a cheap weapon, uh, that was prone to jamming. Floor 78. And I think like... Uh, Says V has failed for the last time, and he must be present his cheeks to chat. That's disturbing that the uh, chat is bullying me for the lack of knowledge in my uh, uh, gun department. It's it's uncomfortable. I don't think so. Varlock says V, you got to watch some forgotten weapons. Yes, you do. Uh, Boycott One and a Plus says, just look at Christ Church in New Zealand. What happened? They should have had guns, I guess. Black 917, all magazines have springs. That's how they push the bulls into the chambers. Oh, hashtag not all. Uh, he also says, uh, Black 917 says, the MD42 is belt fed. That is true. And he also says, that's going to be very difficult since Bank of America tried that and lost in court. Yes, but Bank of America is much smaller than Visa. Or MasterCard, for that matter. Why is the goddamn chat updating so very weirdly on screen now? That's weird. It's fine on, it's fine on the back end. Hmm. Maybe we need to up uh, up the thingy, Bob. Artemis Fowl like says revolver shotguns already... use clips. Yeah, I think they're already cracking down on uh, on guns. Um, like they 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 they're forcing uh, platforms already to to like have certain TOS regarding guns. Yes, I mean they're already forcing TOS. Uh, the com the, the thing is, because a bank might not be able to restrict their services, but Visa absolutely can, because Visa is not a bank. Visa is a private company; it can do whatever it wants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, if Visa doesn't want to use its card to facilitate certain purchases, I very much so doubt a court could force them. But uh, we'll see. Yeah, you, you'd you have to go over... And it's interesting, because it's not... You, they keep saying it's not a monopoly, but it's a duopoly, you know? Mm. Um, Like, the thing is, like, a monopoly isn't the only dangerous thing. Like, you, you can have um, Google and Apple, for example, right? Like, the, all of the things that you buy on the internet has the Google and Apple tax, which I think is like 30%. Because you, you buy it either from the Google store or the App store. And uh, the, those prices are in it, and most people aren't even aware of it. 
Well, the thing is, we need to reevaluate our take on Monopoly. Because a Monopoly doesn't need to be the thing that owns everything. So long as it has an inordinate amount of market authority, it should be considered bad and cracked down on. Yeah, if you have, like, a cartel that owns everything, it's still the same like having a Monopoly from the perspective of the consumer. It's bad. Yes. It's very bad. Yeah, you might even go so far to say that it's shitty. <laughs> Sol Lowy says, The way a bump stock works is the recoil takes the finger off the trigger, then pushes the trigger back into the finger, creating a quasi-machine gun, even though the action is still semi-auto. Ah, oh, there you go. Thank you for the explanation. So yes, it does increase rate of fire and basically makes it close to automatic, even without modifying the weapon's internals. Because otherwise you'd have to mess around with the inside of the gun to make it automatic. Uh, Parrot 4chan sends <laughs> cops Colombian pesos. Oh my god, I have Colombian pesos now. To say, I just to see Arch lose. I wouldn't lose, did he? It'd be too easy. Spells on in war. Well, I don't... The, the thing is, like, I, I generally, like, do not know that much about guns to, to lose in a debate with you, so... Oh, I don't think it was the debate he was referring to. Oh, I was talking about Werno? Probably. Hmm. Artemis Fowl says, AIM 120D3 is the newest long-range AMRAM 160 kilometers range so far. Yes, but that thing's not real. I know the thing you're talking about, and that thing's a, a fevered fantasy, at best. And I don't know if it'll ever become anything beyond a fevered fantasy. As they're still testing that shit. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm pretty sure they have done test firings of it that were at least, you know, successful. So, another 50 years, maybe it'll be uh, in proper service. Artemis Fowl also says, Fabius Bile clone is with Trazen the Infinite. Oh, well, if he's in the fridge, then he's in the fridge. Where he belongs. Uh, Black917 says, actually, most of Cali refugees are returned to California, mostly because we, we have this thing called private property, and it's hot in the spring and summer. Our gun laws come in third. Maybe you will save yourself from the Californians after all. I do hope so. And Sir John says, V, we bully you because we know you can learn. It's not like you're Dev and can't accept that you're wrong on something. Oh, to be fair, Dev, Dev accepts that he's wrong. I did make things. Dev uh, change his mind. Like I, I actually had a stream with him. I, I made him change his mind on a lot of issues. Hmm. See, did you tell him about clips too? No, I haven't gotten it out to it, but I will tell him. Good. Clips go in pistols, Arch. Good. Uh, Black Nine Seventeen also says Bank of America may be smaller, but case law trumps all, and they have competition. Many companies have their own credit card systems now. They won't have much of a presence after losing that many cards. I do hope you're right. I certainly do hope you're right. I just have this sneaking suspicion that Visa and Mastercard are going to just own everything at some point. A collaboration with Amazon, maybe. Like, oh, you can only use Amazon if you can use Visa. Like, Jesus, that would be terrible. <laughs> That would be actually they genuinely that, awful. Because yeah. everyone is addicted to Amazon at this point. Oof. Ah, right. We can wrap it up there then. With all the super chats having been gone through. Uh, and also Kib is sending me angry messages probably. A little filthy. You need to play a video game. Thank you all very much for watching today, chat. Thank you all for your super generous donations as well. And hopefully we will see you all again soon with more debates around whether clips are magazines or magazines are clips. And which one is loaded into revolvers? Have a good day. The belt goes in the pistol art. The belt goes around your waist, V. You moron.